this uh, debate is going to be over the topic is Christian morality superior? Um, the contestants, participants, uh, however you want to put it, uh, Michael from the Canadian Atheist Podcast, and uh, he's going to be taking the, uh, the the negative side of that. Um, well, negative uh, counterpoint. And Mr. Delisio, or his YouTube channel is um, uh, Your Way or Yahweh, Tested by Fire. He will be taking the positive. And so, as the usual rules go, um, the way that this is going to work out, usually the person kind of affirming the positive on that debate question uh, will be going first. So that's going to be uh, Mr. Delisio. Mr. Delisio, is it okay to call you Terry throughout? Uh, you could call me Terry. I have no okay. problem. Okay. So um, he's each uh, of the participants is going to handle um, a quick intro, uh, just you know anywhere from five to ten minutes, and then they're going to enter into you know a back and forth. Um, each one trying to do a kind of a back and forth question and answer kind of thing, qu uh, question and response, for forty five minutes to an hour or so, and then uh, we will probably wrap up towards the end with possibly some questions from the audience as they come in. Um, uh, Peter, uh, from his, uh, gonna go for it. He is producing tonight. I that was one thing that I didn't go over with you, Peter, was uh, the logistics of having people kind of flag, uh, flag questions. But um, I guess I can probably highlight them uh, in the live chat as we go. Yeah, you you can highlight uh, them so they can tag in either you or me, and then uh, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll put them in the private chat. Right, will they be able to do that? Are you under? Will they be able to at gonna go for it in the yeah. live chat? Yeah, if, if okay. they want. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, if you've got questions for either Michael or Terry, uh, Mr. Delisio, uh, just uh, tag at gonna go for it, and uh, that's Peter. He's pr he's producing, and he'll highlight those and then kind of collect those, and uh, we'll see if we if time is permitting. Hopefully, we can get some of those uh, questions over to the participants. So, with that being said, I am going to turn it over to them. I guess we can pull up uh, Michael and Terry. Welcome, gentlemen, and. Uh, Terry, we're going to turn it over to you. Go ahead with your introduction. Well, I guess first, um, if you want to take some time, each of you, um, and since Michael's going second on his in intro, Michael, if you want to introduce yourself to the audience, and then Terry, go ahead. So is Michael first? Go ahead. Yeah, for just a just an intro, just to introduce himself to the to the audience, not uh, not your uh, not your uh, your your rant. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Michael. Uh, I do a little bitty podcast with my friend, uh, the Canadian Atheist. We like to talk to believers about some of the silly, silly things they do and say. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight, Jefferson. Thanks so much for having me back, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Terry Elias. Uh, I go uh, by the moniker Mr. Delisier. Um, I have a channel called Your Way Yahweh, Tested by Fire, and our mandate is as stipulated in 2 Corinthians 10.5. We destroy every argument and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So um, thank you for your hospitality. I'm going to say right now from the beginning, if I lose this debate, I will become an atheist. All right. So thank you very much. I'd like to give glory to Jesus Christ for the victory uh, I'm, th that he has given me. Uh, so yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks guys. Um, so those intros are done and, uh, I guess that's just about it. I'm going to kind of fade into the background here. And so, uh, Terry is going to be going first with his intro. And then once he's done and just indicate when you're done, Terry, and then we're going to, we'll, uh, uh, turn it over to Michael for his part. All right, let's go. So thank you. Uh, so the debate, uh, debate topic tonight uh, that we're addressing is, uh, is Christianity morally superior? So um, I believe it is. And all I have to do to demonstrate that is demonstrate that my God is actually uh, uh, the God of, uh, of our reality. So if I can demonstrate that he is God, then I can demonstrate that there is a, an objective moral standard that we are all uh, supposed to live by. So I'm going to demonstrate that he is God by uh, my infallible argument, which is the seven day cycle argument. So um, it, it is incumbent on Mr. Michael uh, to argue against my argument, uh, to argue against it. If not, uh, he has no um, basis for him to argue against the morality of scripture, of the God of scripture. 
So my argument is based on two infallible propositions. Number one, uh, the Hebrews refers to the seven day cycle as, no, let me repeat. Proposition number one is authorship. So the Hebrews refer to their God as being the author of the seven day cycle. And proposition number two, uh, the Hebrews refer to their God as being the one predicting the universal application of the seven day cycle as a demonstration of his authority over all nations. And by that, he has shown that he is sovereign over all nations. So he will have to refer, uh, refute both propositions, not just one, but both, in order to demonstrate that um, my God is not the sovereign of uh, all of this earth, basically. So um, he will have to argue against the authorship of the seven day cycle. And he has to argue against the predictive part. It's the fact that it's universal and the fact that he said it would be the sign of his demonstration of power, his sovereignty over all nations. So he will have to actually provide a human agency argument. And if he's not unable to do that, then basically by that, I have demonstrated that Jesus is Lord and sovereign over all nations. So that is my first, uh, th that will be basically the, 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 the point of focus of my presentation. He has to argue against that. And once he's unable to do that, um, I'm gonna give him some leeway and I'm gonna respond to all his false accusations about the character of my God. I don't have to do it because he has no moral standard or basis for him to judge God, um, but I will entertain that for the sake of the uh, audience. I will uh, respond to all the false claims being made about what scripture reveals about the character of my God. So again, number one, I've proven God is God. And by that, he is the moral standard by which we are uh, to live by. If he disagrees, he has to argue against my uh, two propositions. If he's unable to do that, then I have demonstrated that he is God and that he Christianity Christianity is the uh, morally superior. That's number one. And once he's unable to argue against my two propositions, I will entertain all the false uh, claims being made about uh, what scripture reveals about my, the character of my God. So I don't have anything else I have to present. That's basically it. My presentation is twofold. Number one, argue against uh, authorship of the seven day cycle and why it's, uni it's universal. Wait, authorship first, where did the seven day cycle come from? Number two, argue against the predictive part of my, uh, of my proposition, the second proposition. Why did the Hebrews, uh, was, why were they able to predict the universal application of the seven day cycle as a sign of his authority? the proof that he is Lord over all nations. He would have to argue against that and uh, provide an argument for human agency. If he can't do that, then he lost the debate. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much. And I will entertain all the other stuff about slavery and all the other so-called claims about uh, what scripture reveals about the character of my God. So thank you very much for your attention and we'll see how uh, Michael uh, engages with my pr uh, presentation. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, yeah, Michael, it's uh, it's up to you. Okie dokie. This should be fun. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please uh, make sure you throw Jefferson some uh, super chat love. Uh, Jefferson, brother, thanks so much for having me back and for hosting. I promise I'll make your job easy. And uh, Terry, thanks, I, I guess, for wanting to have this discussion. Um, our discussion today is morality, more specifically, moral superiority, and who has the high ground, which is superior, secular or Christian morality. I take the stance that when it comes to morality, um, secular morality is obviously uh, the more clear uh, choice. And I want to be clear here, uh, secular, not atheist. Atheism is an answer to a single question and in no way speaks to morality. Does a God or gods, plural, exist? Everything else is something else. Atheism is wholly descriptive. Christianity, on the other hand, is both descriptive and prescriptive. Christopher Hitchens once said, quote, I'm an atheist. You can't tell anything else about me. You know nothing of my politics or whether I'm kind to my children, end quote. 
You can be a moral atheist and you can be an immoral one. You can be a moral Christian and you can certainly be an immoral one. My stance is secular morality is not only vastly superior to Christian morality, uh, but that Christian morality, since that's the take of my friend here, um, is, is clearly immoral. And as a point of clarification, I'm not calling Terry immoral. I'm saying that his foundation is. I say this because Christians believe the Bible and they follow the Bible. They typically vote based on biblical principles, lobbying to see views, uh, laws passed that are in line with their views or biblical views, marginalizing segments of the population that they see as either not right or disagreeable or sinful. Uh, the LGBT community is a clear example of this. We are told that the God of the Bible is not only the foundation for morality, but that all morality comes from him. And in reality, there can be nothing more arbitrary than this. So what's morality? From the SEP. Uh, point one, descriptively to refer to certain codes of conduct that put forward by a group or a society, such as a religion, and accepted by an individual for his or her own behavior, or point two, normatively to refer to a code of conduct that given specified conditions will be put forward by all rational people. If you're going to try to build a framework for this, you need to start with a foundation and a commonly used standard put forth by secularists is well-being. This is the one that I use as well. If you look at the term objective, which is commonly brought up, I hear this all the time, what's your objective standard? Now, objective here means not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. We can apply the standard of well-being here and declare it very simply and honestly to be an objective standard. Now, if you take objective to be mind independent, I don't think you can discuss morality or much else. Because last time I checked, we all have minds and we use them to interpret the world that we live in. Well, where does morality come from? To the best of our knowledge, it's an emergent property of the evolutionary process. This is clearly seen through the ebbs and flows and how morality has changed over time. Once upon a time, slavery was legal and, and totally accepted. We now rightly see it as abhorrent. Beating your kids was once seen as a way to keep them in line. We now know it does more harm than good. I am partially a moral realist. I do believe that some moral facts exist. To quote Matt Slick, quote, it is always wrong to torture a baby merely for one's own personal pleasure, end quote. I don't take an absolutist stance here, and I believe that some morals are subjective. Lying would be a good example of this. There are times when lying is the most moral thing a person can do. We're all familiar with the Nazis at the door looking for Jews problem. If I accept Terry's claim that his God exists, and I think for the purposes of this discussion, I kind of have to, because I don't want to get stuck at the very beginning stating that his God doesn't exist. I mean, it doesn't. His God is totally made up, but that's a different discussion. So all that's left to do is look at the evidence, which in this case is, is the Bible, and judge this God accordingly. Not because I'm angry. I'm not angry with the God of the Bible. I think some of his followers do some pretty heinous things, though. Westboro Baptist is a good example of this. I don't act out of hate. I don't hate the God of the Bible any more than I hate Thanos. And I'm not judging because uh, I love my sin. Sin is made up. As Christopher Hitchens once called it, a mind-forged manacle. Instead, I judge based on actions, and in some cases, inactions. After all, Ephesians 1.11 says, and this is paraphrased, everything is done for his purpose. Are his actions in line with well-being? Well, not according to 2 Chronicles 7, where he stops the rains and sends locusts and plagues to the people. Apparently, in Revelation 15, 15 seven angels will bring seven plagues. Not in Leviticus 26, where if you piss him off, he'll continue striking you sevenfold for your sins. Not in Luke 21, where heaven's signs will be pestilences, earthquakes, and famine. The list goes on. Does he avoid imposing his will on others? Well, not in Exodus 7, where he hardens Pharaoh's heart. Nor in Romans 9, where it is declared he has mercy upon those he desires and hardens those he desires. The flood. Now, we know for sure this thing never happened, but let's entertain the story. Put aside the humans for just one moment. What did all the other animals do that was wrong? This god knew what was going to happen when he had Adam naming all the animals, only later to etch a sketch them out of existence. What about the Ten Commandments? The first four have nothing whatsoever to do with morality. They are all commands not to piss off a fragile entity who needs to be first. Like the worst example of an overly needy partner. What about slavery? 
All we need to do is read Exodus 21 and then Leviticus 25, 44 through 46. I'm not going to go into great detail here. Dr. Josh Bowen, a friend, um, he's got a book out on this called the Old, Did the Old Testament Endorse Slavery? Well, the short answer is, uh-huh. But you should still read that book. What about Abraham and Isaac? Can you imagine the PTSD on both sides, father and son, given that story from Genesis 22? What about all the burnt offerings for a sweet aroma to God, like the Bible says? Not food, just burnt up animals. Leviticus 1 and 11, Ephesians 5, Exodus 29, and more. What about the prophet Elijah? That story from 2 Kings. So a prophet of God gets butthurt, and God sends 42 she-bears to tear up children. I actually once had it argued to me that these weren't children, but it was a gang. How ridiculous. What about Jephthah? That story from Judges 11. God knew who the first person would be to greet him at the door. But no mulligans here, I guess. What about King David and his baby? That story from 2 Samuel. So David cheats, and then God afflicts his kid and causes him to suffer in sickness and die a week later. Now, this is super weird, because in Ezekiel 18, it says God will not punish the son for the sins of the father. Yet, in Deuteronomy 5, it says that he will punish for generations. I'll let Christians deal with that contradiction. What about Jesus, the supposed Prince of Peace? Matthew 10, 34 says he didn't come to bring peace. Now, some versions say sword, some say division. What about Luke 14, 26, where Jesus says, you can't be my disciple unless you hate people and hate your family and even your own life. Well, that's loving. What about Matthew 15, where he doesn't want to heal a Jewish woman's child and calls her a dog? Well, that's kind. He does eventually heal the kid, but I guess the appropriate amount of suffering needed to be met first. What about the people that don't believe, like me? He could annihilate us. He could forgive us, but no. He'll instead choose to have us suffer for all of eternity for these finite crimes. And the worst one of all is blasphemy. The only way to ensure you burn forever. After all, the Bible says all sins will be forgiven except blaspheming the Holy Spirit, according to Mark 3.29. You hurt his feelings and you're toast. Quite literally, I suppose. This God is the only being that watched and in fact knew with 100% perfect foreknowledge every vile and violent act anyone and everyone would ever do, and he watched it happen. Something I, and no one watching this, would ever do. If we had the power to stop it, we would. Anyone watching this, if they had the capacity to stop the cold-blooded slaughter going on in Ukraine, you'd do it. Consider what you've heard. Consider the absolute arbitrariness of this God. He's the root. He decides. Why? Because reasons. We see nothing more here than big stick, might is right. I'm God, so watch your step morality. Christopher Hitchens once said, quote, From a moral perspective, religion has ordinary people do things that in its absence no one would ever contemplate. End quote. And Steven Weinberg once said, quote, left, left on their own, good people will do the best they can. Evil people will do the worst they can. But to get someone good to commit evil... You'll need religion, end quote. And it's all based on this God thing. I'm so glad it's not true. Thanks for listening. All right, thanks for your intros. And I guess with that, we're going to move into the bulk of, the, the, of this. Um, moderating at this point is probably going to be, I'm going to try to keep this as, as inobtrusive as possible. You know, I, I don't want to uh, try to talk over you guys or try to stop you in a flow. But this is going to be uh, the format that they've decided on is basically 45 to 60 minutes, roughly, of a back and forth. So they're going to begin that now, asking questions of each other. Um, I believe that they wanted to kind of impose upon each other a limit of one minute, approximately one minute in responses to kind of keep things moving back and forth. Um, so, just one thing. Uh, uh, so we ask each other questions and we respond to the questions for one minute. Is that it? Yeah, if that's the okay. format that you Perfect. guys understood. Yeah. Perfect. Then, yep. Thank you. So, um, and I guess I don't know if there, if you guys didn't settle this before, like, you know, one of you was going to take 10 minutes to ask questions and the other one be the, you know, the person answering. I go, or do you want to go, we go one, 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 he could start, uh, since I started, I'll ask the first question and then he asked me a question and I ask him a question, vice versa. Okay. Michael, that's okay with you? Just to, if you want, switch it out each time. Perfectly fine to me. Okay, I'm going to recede back into the background. You guys go ahead and begin your dialogue. Thank you. So a lot of things was presented, and I'm going to 
I'm hoping that you ask me those questions of those verses that you're you misrepresented. I'm gonna have some fun and I'm gonna educate you on what the scripture actually says. But I made a challenge, right? So I said, if I can demonstrate my God is God, I don't need you to grant me anything. I'm telling you, I have demonstrated that He is God, and He has to. Argue, you have to argue against that. Once I show that you cannot do that, then I'm gonna entertain all your false claims that you made about my God, and I'm gonna show you why you're wrong. So. I'm gonna ask you a simple question. Is it not a fact that if I, dem if I sh uh, by my two propositions, I have demonstrated that God, uh, that the, the God of the Hebrews is sovereign over all nations. The fact that he is the author of the seven day cycle and number two, that he predicted its universal application as a, uh, as a demonstration of his power over all nations. Is that not sufficient to demonstrate that he is Lord? And by that showing that he is the moral sta standard. No, it's completely unacceptable. Um, what? If, but I mean, I'm, I'm all ears, brother. If I would like you to take as much time as you need, but I'm super glad that Jefferson's recording this because if you have the capacity to do what no believer has ever done, and that's demonstrate that the God of the Bible actually exists, there's a Nobel Prize. Like, please don't waste your breath on me. I'm just a humble public servant. Um, We can't hear you. We can't hear you. You can't hear me at all? Okay. And now we can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, what was the last thing you heard me say? Uh, you said something about a Nobel Prize. Go ahead yeah, with that. Yeah. Yep. Because if you can demonstrate that the, that the God of the Bible exists, you're going to be famous like that. So famous, your head will spin. However, making a claim. So making a claim about the Bible is, is not evidence that the Bible is true. Okay. Um, I accept that there that there is such a thing as uh, like some circular reasoning is necessary, such as we have to use our reasoning to justify our reasoning. I accept that circular reasoning. However, um, okay, go ahead. Fine. You need to talk. So help no, 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 uh, no. I'm just saying that we're almost there. Make your point and then ask me a question because you didn't answer. You didn't answer the question, but you could ask me a question. I'll show you how how do we answer a question. Please demonstrate that this God exists. Um, I just did that by my two propositions, which you did not address. I showed you that he is the author of the seven day cycle that you could say is you could rele relegate that to circular reasoning because I'm appealing to the Bible. M but my second proposition is not circular. Why? Because it has a demonstration of power over our reality. So the power of his word has been shown to subjugate our reality to its will. So that is what you need to address. The fact that he predicted the universal application of the seven day cycle as a sign of his power over all nation, ipso facto, every person that inhabits those nations. By that, I have demonstrated that he is Lord. So can you please address the point and not do like you did in the debate you, which you, you did with Mr. Batman talking about a Nobel Prize? You're doing the same thing that you did with him. Don't do that. It, address it's, the point. Sadly, it's applicable. Um, unfortunately, and I think we may be getting off topic here a little bit because um, I I agreed for the purposes of the debate. Um, like I said in my opening, I'm not sure how closely you're paying attention, that I didn't- It's my question now. Just to let you know, I answered your question. Now it's my question. I necessarily want to argue with you over the existence of this God because that will take up the entirety of the I agree. Time. I agree. I agree. So, I, I, the, the whole point I was doing is my question now. The whole point, I'm, I'm going to pre, uh, a little preamble before I ask my question. The point is, is I don't want you to grant anything. The fact that the matter is you lost the debate if you cannot argue against my two propositions. All you did is talk about the Nobel Prize. You did not address why you feel my argument doesn't follow. That's so, what you need to do. Okay. I, so, I'm asking my question now. I'm asking my question. So, so just be clear. I just want to, okay. just as a, as, a point of, uh, as a point of clarification, okay. I apologize for overspeaking you. Are you suggesting that you have won the debate, which is, and the topic of which is the moral superiority of Christianity or secular or secularism based on the fact that I don't have the capacity to demonstrate your points are wrong. Is that what you're suggesting? No, what I'm suggesting is that sounds that, like that you suggest you're suggesting. Well, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is I have demonstrated that he is God. And by that fact, you know, uh, well, you, that's the claim you're making, but you have not argued it against it. That's the point. And the fact that I have demonstrated that he is God demonstrates that uh, showcases that he is the moral authority over this earth. And your opinions, your subjective opinions, have no value 
as it relates to that, because who are you to judge God if I have demonstrated that he is God? That is the whole point I, I, I was bringing to your attention. And by that, I have won the debate. Now I'm willing to entertain all your false claims you made about God. So I'm going to let you, once, by, by the fact that you were unable to argue against my, my position, shows that I don't need you to grant me anything. I've showcased that he is God. You have not presented an argument against it. Now I'm going to entertain all your false claims about Christianity. So, uh, 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 so my question to you is, one of the claims you made is slavery. Can you explain to me in Leviticus 25 uh, all the verses that pertains to um, God saying uh, he would take a servant, a servant. I, I want you to explain to me why in Leviticus 25 you're saying it, it relates to slaves as opposed to servant, given the fact that it says in Le Leviticus 25, 35, it's to strengthen the, the stranger and to make them incorporate them inside of Israel so that they can become a Hebrew. So how do you reconcile... Uh, Levit Leviticus 25:35, which your understanding of so-called slavery. So what I referenced wasn't 25:35; it was 24 through 46. Same chapter. Uh, yeah, I don't want to bore um, the audience. Just please look that up. I'd like to go back to something you you said a moment ago, though, and you said that. Ask your question. You, you said that you demonstrated. Um, well, I think it's particularly. Um, Rel relevant because you've already declared victory uh, in this, which is interesting. So I, I need to get a couple of, I think I need a couple of clarifying questions answered perhaps. Um, so you are, you are a Christian. Yes. Yes. That's why I'm here. Okay. Do you, I, I don't like to hang this label on people because it has baggage. Are you a presuppositionalist? No. Okay. My my proposition shows you is I'm not a presuppos uh, I didn't presuppose anything. I said the first proposition is a claim. The second one supports the claim, validating the claim. By the fact that it's not circular, because circular is going to the Bible to prove the Bible. I showed you that the Bible has power to subjugate your reality. The seven day cycle is universal. That is my evidence. So it's not pre I'm not presupposing any anything. So and I don't I don't want to be I'm, I'm trying not to be a, a dick about this. But did you come here to discuss? secular versus Christian morality, or just, another, or just another platform to talk about this seven day cycle thing. Because, uh, because the reality is, I, I didn't prepare anything to discuss the idiocy of your second seven day cycle. Okay. Because the debate topic was okay. secular versus Christian morality. So if you'd like to discuss secular versus Christian morality, we can do that. Okay, uh, uh, I seen you. Uh, I seen the little exchange you had with uh, the Catholic Can Canadian guy. It seems like you have a problem understanding simple concepts. Because I said, if I could demonstrate that he is God, then he is the object, the objective standard for morality. I said I established that, so now I can move on. I didn't go to to the seven day cycle anymore. I I moved on. I asked you a question about slavery. You made a claim about slavery. I asking you now, I'm going to give you another question. Hopefully you could answer this one. Same chapter, Leviticus 25, verse 47 and 48 says a, a, a stranger can own an Israelite. If, if they're slaves, why are they able to own their masters? Simple question. So I am not an expert on biblical slavery. So why did you make the point? <laughs> I, I made the point based on the couple of the couple of references that I'm in 25, 44 through 46, would you like to, so what I can do is, is I can pull up those two verses. So uh, I, I know those verses. Hey, hey, I know those verses. Okay. okay. Just, just, just one, one second here. Um, I am, I'm a really affable person, but if all you're going to do is be a condescending fuck, this isn't going to go too far. Okay. So, so try to try to exercise some humility, like maybe just a smidge, and um, take First Peter three fifteen to heart, right? And if you're going to educate me, like you seem to think you are, then do so as as First Peter three fifteen says, with gentleness and respect, not as a condescending fuck. Okay? Can we continue in a in a cordial way? Because uh, if if you if you want me to turn into the prick that I have the capacity to be, you're revving me that way.
Same thing I saw you do with Canadian Catholic and the other guy. Uh, can we leave the emotions on the side and just address the points? If you'd uh, like to get emotional, I could. Okay. No, but can, get, can, can we address the point? You made a claim about slavery. Now you responded to the slavery that you're not an expert on it, but you argued for slavery. You, you falsely accused my God of slavery. So that shows me that you're willing to accuse somebody without proper information and doing your due diligence. Thank you for showing me that you're a false witness. Now, can we go to the next uh, uh, claim that you made about the scripture? Nelson, if you'd like to do that. We can go to the next claim, because now I showed you that you don't know nothing about slavery in the Bible. You didn't prove that. You made you made a claim about God sent the, the she-bears. Can you show me in that verse where it says God sent the, the she-bears? So what it's a liar, that I don't know, uh, according to your standard uh, well-being, a, a liar is not, is not a good thing, right? According to your standard? No, no, that's that's not at all what I said. Okay, so uh, you could be a liar and be a, uh, and, and that's a part of your well-being thing. You could so lie about somebody. What I, was, what I said was, is that lying, I believe, is subjective. I said that sometimes lying is the most moral thing a person can do. Okay, so lying by accusing somebody about something that's not true, that's that's what? moral. That, okay, so show so now show me that you're right when you accuse my God of sending those bears. Show me in the verse that says He sent him. Okay, so it's Second Kings. Give me a moment. Yeah, please. You can talk about something else if you want while I look this up. While he looks it up, is you're going to find nowhere in the verse that it says God sent them. What it says is that the prophet cursed those ch those children. And what does that mean? God shines his light on the good and the bad. So he's, he's just and gracious in that way. He could remove that light and evil befalls you. So he removed the light, but he didn't send the bears. So evil befell people who are blaspheming and blaspheming God. So you got to explain to me why. First of all, why did you say uh, God sent the bears? Because the verse doesn't say that. And number two, are you telling me God has to shine on somebody who is blaspheming him? Because if that's what you're saying, that God is bad because he removed this light, you got to explain to me according to what standard, moral standard, uh, moral standard are you suggesting that God has to shed his light on people who are against him? So number one, show me where it says uh, uh, God sent the bears. Because uh, I, I don't know. I'm looking it up. Uh, look it up. I'll give you all the time you need. You won't find it. <sighs> what else did he say? He says a, a whole bunch of lies. What, what else did he say? He went to... I'm going to let you refresh my memories on the things that you, you, you claimed about my father. You want me to pull it up? I can read it for you if you want. I got it. Okay. To find it. Okay, he turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then he called down a curse on them. Yes, it, it, it says he called down or he cursed them. He called down a curse on them in the name. Well, of the Lord. Hebrew doesn't say call down a curse. It says he cursed them. But go ahead, continue. So it says in the NIV. It's yeah, says, the NIV is not a good translation. But go ahead. If you just want to argue. So okay, if you just want to argue versions of the Bible, that's cool too. No, I went to the original language, but it's okay. Uh, tell me, tell me uh, where the part where it says God, God uh, sent the bears. So, do you think that Elijah called into the woods and said, "Hey, bears, come rip these kids up"? I just answered the question. I said, "Bring in a curse. There's blessings and there's cursing, curses. That's established in the, ex ex uh, in the book Exodus and Deuteronomy 30. It says, choose life, and you will. I will shed, shed my light on you. Mm -hmm. And he sheds the light, his light, shines his light on the good and the bad, giving everybody a chance to repent." So are you telling me that God has uh, must keep his light on people that's blaspheming his name? I'm not saying that at all. Okay, so that's the story. That That's basically the story that he cursed them, the prophet cursed them in the name of God, and the bear, bears came. So darkness overwhelmed, and whatever's in darkness, the destroyer, who is Satan, devoured those children. Because that's the oh, whole purpose. Satan sent them. Huh? Satan sent them. Uh, do you know that Satan is called the destroyer? And, I'm and, asking and, you quite, did Satan yeah, send them? Yeah, basically. But, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay, no, but the point is, is where does it say in the verse that God sent them? Is so it there? Curse them in the name of the Lord. He didn't say oh. curse them in the name of Satan. No, no, no. I, I didn't ask you that. I'm asking you, where do you, where do you, how does it follow that he cursed them? That means God sent them. 
What, 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 where, where are you getting this, this, this understanding that that's you that, curse that's, them in the okay. name of the Lord? Therefore, so are you suggesting that he cursed them in the name of the Lord and then Satan sent the bears? Uh, did you uh, understand what I just said? Blessing and cursing, right. light shining on you. God can remove that light at any moment. Are you telling me God has to keep that light on a person that's cursing Your his God name? Exist. But no, so no, no, no. We're doing the internal critique. You're all over the place. Internal critique. You went to a verse and you suggested yes. God sent the bears. I'm telling you, I'm explaining to you that God did not send the bears. Where does it say sending? he sent the bears? So I'm it's, on, not there. it's not there. So I'm Give on the next claim right now. Which okay. version of the Bible are you referring to when you're talking about that it's not God that sends them? Show, go to any translation you want. Show me I where it says God sent the bears. You okay, so you go to the NLV. Show me where it says God sent the bears. God sent the bears. Show me that part. Called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. So that means it is reasonable. It is reasonable. Either God sent the bears. Okay, so you so you don't have you don't have word for it. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Bears. Which one? Okay. okay, so so basically, again, uh, you're not able to show me that it says God sent the bears, and I already explained to you what it means to curse to bring a curse on those children. It means to remove the light. That's it. I I, I already gave you the explanation. Removing the light, uh, just to finalize, removing the light doesn't uh, necessitate sending the bears. I don't know what link you're trying to make. Removing light, sending bears. Okay. I don't see the link. We can, we can let the we can let the audience decide. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's the second thing that you obviously were not prepared to defend. Can you give me an, an, your next uh, objection that you made about God? Because obviously you can argue against my 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 seven day cycle argument. Can you give me uh, another? I'm here to talk about your stupid seven day cycle. I know, I know, but you can argue. It's so stupid you can argue against it. Uh, can you give me your next objection that you claim the the false representation you made about God? Because you're here to go against the morality. You're saying you're going to appeal to scripture. I showed you two. Yeah. Two, two times that you don't know what you're talking about. Let's go third time, uh, uh, third time to charm, right? Supposedly. Give me another example. Okay. So do you think that, um, do you think that it is kind? So do you believe that Jesus was, was God made flesh? Yes. Okay. That's not one of your objections, but. Uh, well, I, I'm, I like asking you, I'm asking you a question. So you, you believe Jesus was God made flesh? Exactly. You don't know what that means, but go ahead. So again, we're getting into the condescending fuck territory. Okay. No, but you don't know what that means. I, I could I ask you to give me two verses of what that means. You won't be able to provide them. So it's not condescending. I'm just telling the truth. I, I don't... Hang on, hang on. I, uh, I do want to moderate a little bit. Look, if you, look, if you guys are going to ask each other questions, and mostly this is for you, Terry. If he's going to ask you a question, don't. You could take the the time and your minute or so of response to tell him what you think about Jesus being God, rather than talking about how little you uh, assume he doesn't know about your answer. He he's asking okay. you a question. You you can provide him and us the answer of what you what you think. Uh, that... I, I, I understand. Okay. okay. Uh, the, the only problem with that is I would have to give him uh, at least a three minute lesson on what the incarnation is. Uh, the true incarnation and i don't i, I don't, we're not here to debate the incarnation so i'm a, i'm willing to let him continue with whatever argument he wh where he's trying to lead me okay he is god in the flesh continue okay i'm just yeah i'm just doing the the, the reminder if you guys ask questions don't don't take up time with your response trying to accuse the other person of no problem he, he knows what they're just he knows just no problem you should well he doesn't know uh, there's lots of different christians with different takes on certain theological things i myself have heard some things from you here and in the past that are a little idiosyncratic so it it would behoove you to explain especially to most of the people here that i think are watching or my audience will not have a, a common frame of reference for some of the things that you're going at so just yeah. la laughing at laughing at our at our ignorance is if you've got something over on michael and us Okay. just doesn't come across well so if you can try to sum it up quickly if you can't okay, let I, us know I, I, it's i'll sum it up big. quickly okay i'll right. I, I sum it up real quick john 3 13 uh psalms 80 verse 8 15 and 17 shows that god is eternal the son of god and his eternal divine state in heaven projected his light and at the end of that light was a body prepared for him a fully human person so two persons one nature uh, i'm sorry one person two natures two different realities the eternal reality he's divine in the eternal reality he projects itself and comes in temporal space and he's fully man. So one person, I know people will say that's two persons. No, it's not. 
because you're conflating two realities, one person, two natures, two different realities. So that's what the incarnation, because I debate against those so-called Christians who claim that he is fully God and fully man in one body. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 41, 40 and 41 this, uh, refutes that, and John 3, 13 as well. So go ahead. Okay, so in Matthew 15, one of the other points that I made, when a Jewish woman goes to Jesus yeah. and says, can you heal my son? Okay. Um, do you think that it is... So remember when I said before that the standard of morality that I use is well-being, right? Okay. So how, how do you define well-being? I define well-being according to what scripture says, uh, the fact that he shows grace to us, he shines his light upon us, and by that we're blessed. So that is my well-being, being able, uh, being uh, graced by His presence. That is uh, well-being to us, and everything that proceeds from that, His law. So um, again, uh, you can make your argument that you were making uh, Matthew 15. I haven't, I haven't made it yet. So I, okay. I asked you what your definition of well-being was. Okay. So how, just so that we can have a clear understanding of where we're both coming from. Okay. Um, I define well-being as a reduction of suffering, to the best of our ability at the same time promoting flourishing to the best of our ability. Um, I've heard some people say a balance between mental and physical health. Um, I also just, just a quick thing. Uh, do you, sure. I, I'm not going to argue this. Just a quick thing uh, to add to what you're saying. You're against uh, uh, abortions. Am I against abortion? I think yeah. I, I am. I am personally pro-life. However, I support a woman's right to choose. Okay, so I I, I'm showing I'm showing the 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 the, the contradiction in your statement. But go ahead. Less abortion is good personally but it but it's not but but not my body not my choice so so it's not a standard then you're, you're you don't have an objective standard go ahead it changes depending on you know people's whims but go so, ahead um i also as a part of my uh, well-being i define it as not involuntary imposing your will on someone else who cannot or does not consent um this can uh, you can also employ uh john the philosopher john rawls veil of ignorance uh in this Okay. And I also use consequential ethics, okay. and meaning that my my actions have an impact on somebody else. Okay. So so from a from a secular perspective, when I look at the the story in Matthew 15, I look at uh, Jesus, who was, and this is why I asked you, God made flesh, so that he yeah. had all of the ability that that God does, right? Because he was God made flesh. Um, no, he, he didn't. Have, but go ahead, no problem. He could have just snapped his fingers or, you know, like um, the, uh, the soldier in the garden of Gethsemane, right? He, how he reattaches the ear to the, the soldier or how he raises Lazarus from the dead, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. He could have, he could have healed this woman's uh, child Daughter, and it yeah. wouldn't have been any sweat off his back. Right now in not doing that. Now he didn't do it right away. He, uh, according to the story, he did do it eventually. Right. Yeah. But this is where, I look at this God and say, well, you know, even if I accept that this God is, is, is real, then yeah. he's, he's morally inferior. If you, if there was somebody, if somebody came to you and you had the capacity to heal their sick child, would you do it? Okay. Uh, again, a misrepresentation, uh, misrepresentation of the story. The story oh, goes, I, I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to, I'm going to, um, try to correct you as at the same time. Uh, the story is the child was possessed by a demon. For you to be possessed by a demon, you have to be participating in demonic activities. So this woman was a pagan participating in demonic stuff. And now she's coming to Jesus Christ for help now because she sees that she can, now her daughter is possessed because of her activities. So now Jesus is saying, as he's done throughout scripture, showing that, hey, do you recognize what you did? Your dog. Everybody in Job called himself a worm. He's a prophet. He called himself a worm. Every person with humility recognizes their failures. If you recognize your failure, then God blesses you. That's why he said, blessed are those who are weak in spirit. For you to say that you're weak in spirit, you have to recognize that you're weak in spirit. So you have to acknowledge your failures. So the woman acknowledged her failures. She says, yes, I'm a dog. But even a dog eats from the crumbs that falls from the table. So and the fact that she said that, Jesus said, you have more faith than anybody in, I, I've met. And her daughter was healed. So the point is, why are you arguing 
for something when the when the woman herself recognized she was a dog, A, and B, she's not complaining. Why are you complaining for somebody who's not complaining? She didn't make you her advocate. So I don't know why you're, I don't understand what you're arguing right now, but go ahead. Could you answer my question? Uh, if somebody was attacking me and, uh, and went against me. I asked you. No, oh, okay, if they're not going against me and I had the power to do it, I'll do it, yeah. But the story is, she, she went against God. More moral than the God of the Bible. No, because you're misrepresenting because that's a false equ equivocation because she was going against God by participating in de demonic activities and she recognized that. So who are you to say contrary, contra uh, contrary to what she said? She who recognized she was a dog. Who am I? I am, I am by, my, by any standard you want to want to mention, I am more moral than the God of the Bible. You, you don't, you don't stipulate why. is morally inferior to me. That's a statement, a claim, yes, but you didn't you you didn't uh, substantiate your claim. You came so, with a story. You came with a story like, trying to defend like, a woman like who recognized her failure. How I would be? I'm sorry. Would you like me to give you examples of how? Okay, but 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 I would like you to to respond directly to what I'm saying. How are you defending somebody who recognized her own failures, who recognized she was a dog, and who was blessed because of it? Who are you to defend her when she's not the one complaining? That has nothing to do with the. You fact doing an internal that, critique? No. No, that's not what I'm doing. That has nothing to do with the fact doing that, an that, that she goes to someone and says, w will you heal my child, right? And this, this is God, right? It would be no sweat off his balls to just go, done, healed. And now to answer my own question about how, to give you some examples of how I am morally superior to this beast portrayed in the Bible, I'm so glad it's not real. For example, there would be no famine. There would be no such thing as- We're not famining. Uh, no child of God is, is, is promised to, God, to, to the children of God that we would ne never beg for bread. So why, you're talking about your worldly problems. That's not our problem. We're blessed. Did you so, just say there's no famine in the world? No, 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 not for us, not for Christians. That is your worldly problems. Why? Why aren't you feeding are the, the homeless? You suggesting there are no Christians that ever go to bed hungry. Well, I don't know how you could possibly know that. Uh, I, if you're doing an internal critique, it says here in the it promises because I don't know because you said you were a former Christian. I, I don't know what yes. Bible, uh, what Bible you've been reading. It says here a, a, a child of God would never uh, beg for his bread. Right. It says, uh, oh, it seek the kingdom. Uh, I'm going to give you another example. Seek the kingdom and, the, uh, and its righteousness and everything will be provided for you. So what are you, what are you talking about? Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Finish your point. No, the point is I'm doing an internal critique. You're, you're doing an intern, uh, you, you go from going into the Bible, appealing to the Bible, and then outside the Bible. Try to stick to your, your train of thought. If it's an eternal critique, it says no Christian is supposed to be begging for bread. So that's the reason why I say no Christian will ever suffer of, 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 of uh, famine. Now, if somebody is suffering, then he has to really reconsider if, if he's a Christian. So, so the scriptures that, okay. quite, so, quite clearly you, establishes that. Okay. So what you've done there is that's the, that's the no true Scotsman fallacy, right? So what you're saying is if because because the Bible says no one will ever suffer, if someone does suffer, they must not be a real Christian. That's, that's how does mean. a no true Scotsman fallacy work for an internal critique? Are you not doing an internal critique? No. Do you know what it means to do an internal critique? Yes, that I means do. you're appealing to the scriptures for your parameters. <laughs> what, what are you doing? How does a no true Scotsman fallacy uh, 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 relates to an internal critique? Again, I think everybody, everybody watching this yes. can, can see what you just did. So Thank we can you. move on to something else. How about Luke 14? Like how about Luke 14, 26? Let's go to your next one. No problem. I just, what does it say in Luke 14? Please entertain us. Where Jesus says, basically, if you come to me not hating basically everybody, including your own life, you can't be my disciple. Is that, is that what it says? Yeah. He says, uh, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if, you hate, if you don't hate your mother or father, uh, mother or father, um, uh, no, it doesn't even say if you hate. But it says something like, um, if you... We, 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 we will use the word hate. If you hate mother and father, if you don't hate mother and father to follow me, basically that's what, what it's uh, uh, conveying, the message. If you love your mother and father more than God, that's the basic 
a principle that's being established in that verse. I understand that that's your so interpretation. I agree with that. So what's yeah. the problem with that? There, well, actually, it's not new in the New Testament. It's all throughout Scripture. Psalm forty-five does that. The, uh, Psalms eighty-eight, Psalm six, uh, Psalm sixty-eight, Psalm sixty-nine. David says the same thing. My mother and father does not recognize me. Abraham says the same thing. Israel says the same thing in Isaiah uh, sixty, sixty, sixty-five. Uh, this is not something new. Uh, Sixty-three. I'm sorry. Um, we are to love God more than our, 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 our father, our mother, even our own self. I don't, I don't say why is that problematic? It, the, the verse is self-explanatory. How about, I don't know what that means. how about King David and his baby from second Samuel? And what about it? So you're familiar with that story? I, I'm totally familiar. Are you familiar? Cause, uh, so are you David, saying God has to bless a child again, back on the light thing? No, setting the light. Are you saying, because everybody, John 1, 3 says, everyone is sustained by the light to be alive. You and I are sustained by the light of God to be alive. He says he shines on the good and the bad. Are you telling me that God has to shine his light on the child that was conceived in, uh, 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 in, uh, in, in fornication by the fact that he had, uh, David took a wife to himself from his one of his soldiers, a loyal soldier. Are you telling me that he, God has to shine, uh, shed his light on, on that child? What did the baby do that was wrong? Um, that's David's fault. And David recognized that. Why so, you, you know, The well, Bible says that, that God will not punish the son for the sins of the father? No, 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 no. This is not, again, let me repeat uh, my position. Are you telling me God has to shine, shed his light? First of all, that child will be in, uh, in heaven because he oh, didn't commit really? any How do you know that? Uh, because he didn't commit any sin. You have to commit sin for you to. Oh, so to, why did he deserve to suffer in sickness and die? Um, you're asking a whole bunch of questions. Can we address the first point? Uh, cause you made a claim trying to suggest that God has to shed his light on a child that was born. Okay. So if you're not saying that, then your, your whole argument goes out the window. The fact still you, remains. I'm a, I asked you a couple questions. That is true. Yeah. Three. I asked you what the child did that was wrong. I'm super he didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing. The child ended up in heaven. And, uh, and I'm sorry. I, I, well, I'm really curious as to why. So David was the one who cheated, right? You asked me a few minutes ago about abortion and stuff like that. Yeah, I know. I imagine that you would see um, the if a woman goes into an abortion clinic, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to misrepresent you. I imagine that if a woman went into an abortion clinic and was gonna was gonna terminate a pregnancy, that you would probably argue that 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 unborn child was innocent. Exactly. Right? Right. So do you think, so then do you think that King David's baby was not innocent? Am I speaking to, I'm going to try again. Are you telling me, because you're that's, trying to, the, 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 let me, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, hopefully you pay attention this time. Are you telling me your uh, uh, example of abortion is analogous to God not shedding his light as if he owes that light to that child? I'm, it, it is is, is, are you saying God, are you saying God removing his light is equated to God killing that baby? I'm saying that because we are talking in both instances, in both instances, we are talking about a life that is going to be terminated. Whether it be the whether it be the whose fault is that? Whether it be the unborn child, okay, in uh, in the abortion clinic, or the child, because the Bible says that God afflicted the child with illness. By removing his light. child died. Right, so did Satan do that too? Wait, 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 wait. You're um, just, you just seem to be blaming her. Like, it's, it seems to me like you're just, everything that bad that happens, you know, it's like, it's, it's like that line from um, the movies, the devil's, uh, the devil's advocate, or right. no, not the devil's advocate, end of days. When something good happens, it's God's will. When something bad happens, he moves in mysterious ways. When the Bible, uh, wait, 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 wait. Are, are you suggesting? So I, I could give you ten verses where it says God sheds His light. That's a blessing. Are I you telling me? You okay, okay. So, 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 so answer I, a direct question. What, what? Repeat your question because you add four questions. Did I can tell you your four questions? I can tell you your four questions. Did King David's baby do that was wrong that he deserved to die? Um, first, again. I never said the baby did any, because uh, if you were paying attention, I already said the kid was innocent. And you suggested, now let me finalize my statement. Not already, baby? Uh, uh, that's, that's what you want to That's what you want to point out? No problem. Point it out. You could repeat it. You've said it at least five or six times. But the fact still remains, you're suggesting that God has to shed his light on anybody. 
did not explain to me. So if okay, so are you now? That's step number one. Wait, oh, wait. Step light. number one. Oh, you accepted. Caesar. You accept. You accepted number one that God doesn't have to shed His light on anybody. So you accepted that. So let us see what it follows. So if God removes His light on a child, that He doesn't owe that child anything. Are you saying God killed that child? The, the, yes, the innocent child. Yeah, but you're contradicting yourself from the your, your first thing that you disagreed. You said God doesn't owe no one to shed His light on anyone. He doesn't have, but he doesn't have to afflict the child either. No, 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 no. Now, now you, you're, you're diverting. You went uh, step number one. Child, step number one. You said God does not have to shed His light on no one. I'm saying if He doesn't shed His light, that's afflicting. Are you telling me now because He's not shedding His light that somehow He's responsible? He's absolutely responsible. But you said he, he doesn't owe no one. Oh, how is he responsible? See, this is the thing. <laughs> you can't follow your own arguments. You can you can laugh as much as you no, want. No, no, but everybody heard you. You you can't follow your you you agreed on the first pro proposition and then you disagree on the second proposition, but it doesn't follow. So here's here's the problem. Here here here's the problem with that very specific story. Okay. Please. So God chooses to take his light away. Okay. Of that child, yes. And now this is, I understand this is your interpretation because the Bible actually says okay. that he afflicted the child. By removing his light. And that's no, all throughout scripture. It doesn't say that. It's all from Genesis to Revelation. That's the concept it, established. Okay. You it, can, I'm not going to, I'm not going to help you out with that, but if you don't know that, I'm sorry. If you want to add to the text, that's fine. But that's what you're doing. The uh, Bible, adding to the text? The Bible says. Like what you said that God sent the, the bears? That's adding to the text. <laughs> Adding to the text. the baby to fall into sickness and die a week later. Um, read, read, read the verse for me. You, I've, I've already laid it out. Everyone watching this can just look okay. it up. It's second, Samuel. same way. There's the, the same, same thing you did tenor. with the bears, yeah, and same tenor. thing you did with the slavery, right? Same thing sure. you did with the bears and with the slavery that, that, yeah. that you can argue. Okay, so let me ask you a question again. Let me try to bring some uh, closure to this uh, issue. Um, mm -hmm. You're saying the child is innocent. I, I believe the child is innocent. You said the the child, child, no, innocent. no, the child is innocent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The child is innocent. Number one, the child is in heaven. You're saying that somehow the child, uh, because um, you're aware that only sinners will not inherit the kingdom. You know that verse that says sinners will aren't not inherit. Are we all born in sin? Huh? Aren't we all born? Aren't we all born? Okay. 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 So, so being born with a sin nature is the same thing as being a sinner. Do you know sinning is an action verb? You know the difference between born with a sinful nature? Let everybody listen to this. Being born with a sinful nature is the same thing for Mr. Michael here as being a sinner. Scripture doesn't reveal that, and even common sense would not there lead you towards that. Wow. Lots of different Christian traditions. I'm not talking about Christian tr tradition. I'm using logic here. Is and I'm using linguistic as well. Are you but, telling me being born with a sin nature is sin the same thing? As being a sinner, don't you know? As for you to be a sinner, you have to go against the law. What law did he break? <laughs> Were you a Christian? Were you a Christian? <laughs> to save everybody. Did did, did Jesus' sacrifice on the cross redeem all sin? Sinners, the child is not a sinner. It, it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. It didn't pay the price for all the for all the sins of man. For the sins of man, a child is not a man. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Mankind, humankind. But he didn't sin. The child did not sin. Do you know there's two classes of people in, in heaven? Are you there's aware of that? Classes. Um, well, I guess it depends how much money you got. But oh, oh, no, no, no. Can you refer me to the verse that refers to two, uh, two different classes of people? I, there's I, multiple I of you. The classes of people in heaven. Okay, so you don't know what you're talking about again. Thank you. Can you go to the next point? Because sure. uh, we, can, we can go on to the next one if you like. How about Jephthah's daughter in Judges 11? Okay. okay. What about it? Does does God know? So, do you believe that that this that this God is is omniscient? Of course, of course. Okay. So, by omniscient, because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yes. Do, do you mean by omniscient, or do you define omniscient is as being having perfect knowledge of both? Yes, 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 okay. yes. All right. So. Is it reasonable to say then that because this God has knowledge of past, present, and future, yes, that when Jephthah was basically bartering with God and saying, "Hey, if you let me win this war, I'll sacrifice the first thing that comes comes to greet me when I get home." I don't believe it's bartering, but go ahead. 
do you think that, well, or praying or asking, whatever. Yes. Do you, think, do you think it's reasonable that the God who knows the future would have been like, uh, please don't say that, Jeff, please, because, you know, it's, it's your, I already know it's going to be your daughter. Like, uh, are you saying, are you saying the daughter was sacrificed? He like would literally? Known, would, would God have known ahead of time? God knows everything. I already answered that from the very first uh, God, question. So at the time, God basically, says, yep, you're you're good, man. You're going to win that yeah, battle. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And then Jephthah comes home, okay. and his daughter comes out to greet him. And okay. God knew that ahead of time, didn't he? Okay, so are you saying that... The, Please the, answer my direct yes, question. Yes, I already answered answer that from the very first, it follows. He knows everything, so it right. follows. So, so he get knew. to the point. Right, so, so then... So then Jephthah's daughter makes a deal with him to go out and basically sow her wild oats for, I think it says 30 or 40 days and then come Two back months. Yeah. And then, or whatever it was and then come back and okay. be sacrificed. A sacrifice how? Like in literal sense? Uh, she was killed. Oh, she was killed. Is, is that what this, uh, do you know what the, the word uh, for uh, to offer in Hebrew? No, I don't know that word. Uh, don't you think that would be important for you to understand the context of what the, the, the passage is saying? Do you know the word Allah, the verb Allah, the verb Allah means ascension? Do you know that? Uh, ascension. And the word, oh, ascension, yes. Or stairway. Where did she ascend to? Uh, no, no, that's not, that's not the point. The point is she was offered for temple service. And that's when you read at the end of the, uh, for the context, she, it says she never knew a man. I'm sorry. She, she was... Not? Of, of course not. Why would they be celebrating her at the end of the verse, the chapter? It says this every year to celebrate her. Why would they be celebrating if she was sacrificed? So she didn't die. They celebrate her. A, the word Ola doesn't mean sacrifice in all contexts. It can mean ascension. And I gave you an example. Uh, I, I, I gave you, uh, uh, well, according to the Hebrew, and telling, uh, the Hebrew understanding of the, the word Ola, it means the primary definition of the word. It means ascension. So what does that mean? The same thing in Genesis 18. God offered uh, Abraham, who thought God asked him to sacrifice his son, said to offer him up as an, a stairway between him and God, as a prefigure of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ says in Matthew and John and John 8, 56, that Abraham knew, saw my day, he rejoiced. Abraham saw my day and he rejoiced. So referring to what Abraham did with Isaac, uh, with Jacob, no, with Isaac as a prefigure of himself. So it was not an offering as a sacrifice, but an offering as a stairway between mankind and God. And we can see that in Job uh, 9.33, same thing. Who can be an intercessor or a stairway between mankind and God who can hold both our hands? Jesus Christ is that, uh, uh, um, uh, what can I say? representation of that uh, th that understanding or that principle. So when it goes to Jephna, the, the, the daughter that you're referring to, the word, you have to explain to me why you say Ola in this context means sacrifice in the literal sense, as opposed to offering uh, her daughter for temple service. Explain to me wh why, why that's your understanding of the con uh, of the verse. So, so in, in, uh, in Judges 11. Go ahead. Um, 31 says, uh, whoever, whatever comes out of my door, to meet me uh, in triumph yes. from the Amorites will, will, uh, will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Uh, I will, and, and I will Allah. No, I'm, I'm just. Offer. I know, so I know, I know. I know I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the Hebrew. I will Allah, the word Allah is right there, the verb, and Ola, burnt offering. But the primary definition of Ola is ascension, not burnt offering. So it says here, then in verse 38, it says, you may go, he said, basically going off for two months. Um, went and wept because uh, she would never marry. And after two months, she returned. Because she has to be a virgin for temple service. Right. But, but, but she went off to basically whore around. And then after the two the, the, months, she, she was a virgin. And according to the context, she's a virgin. She never she knew a man. That's, that's the next her, verse. She returned to her father. Okay. And did... As he had vowed. Now, can you show me where it says she hoard around? Because the next verse, I'm gonna go to drug. Yeah, then, then it's then it says here and said it's here it says here and she was a virgin. Okay, so she hoard around, but she was a virgin. Oh my goodness! Are you okay, so maybe she, she was too ugly to get lucky. 
I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Again, another, this is the fifth time you're misrepresenting scripture. So, in, so if you're going to argue these things, are you going to if you're going to argue these things, don't you think you should prepare yourself? So I, this is not the first time verse, you came with these arguments. In verse, you never prepared yourself. In verse thirty-one. <laughs> in verse thirty-one, it says, "Will be sacrificed as a burnt offering," and then in verse thirty-eight. Pardon okay. me, 39. After the two months, she returned to her father and he did as he vowed. Okay. And which means she was offered as a burnt offering. Uh, I, I already told you the definition of the word hola. You don't know the, the Hebrew understanding of the word hola. The primary definition means ascension. But go ahead. So you're saying the Bible's wrong. She wasn't. I, I, I just, where do you see the word kill here? Uh, but what, what did he really just, did she get a bad sunburn? I like, just told you the definition of the word. The word that you're uh, that you're uh, translating as burnt offering, I said, comes from the Hebrew ola, from the, uh, the Hebrew verb Allah, which means primarily to ascend, a stairway. And, it, 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 and I gave you an example, Genesis 18, the, and Jacob was, uh, uh, no, not Jacob, Isaac was offered as a stairway, being a representation of Jesus Christ, who is the one who is fully divine and fully God, uh, fully divine in heaven and fully man on earth, being able to hold the hand of man and hold the hand of God. As for Job 9.33, my understanding is consistent. You don't, your, your, your understanding is not even consistent with the chapter that you're presenting because you went from saying she was, she was, she was in, uh, doing debauchery, being a prostitute, and then it says here she was a virgin. So you're all over the place. You should prepare yourself when you're making these arguments because you're repeating the arguments of other people. So not, you didn't do, and this shows me your desperation, shows me that most atheists are not really atheists. They're not really skeptics. They're depending, they're looking for any reason to justify the rebellion. Because if you really did believe that you had a, a case to present, you will be able to defend it accurately. This is your fifth chance, the fifth time that you're presenting the case and you misrepresented all of them. Do you have another case? Another Which, claim? Uh, so you said the primary meaning is ascension. Exactly. Is there another meaning that can be attributed to that? It could also be sacrifice. I just said. Oh, so it could be sacrifice too. Okay. That was I said that like three minutes ago. You have to. I said it three minutes ago that you have to show me in con contextually that it is sacrifice. I'm saying why do you say sacrifice when it could mean ascension? I said that three minutes ago. Did you hear me? Abraham and Isaac. Uh, it's the same thing. Same word. Okay, so I'm I'm talking about the story from Genesis 22. Where... Same word. Same thing. Same thing. Okay, so but well, Isaac never gets killed, right? He he never gets sacrificed. No, the the angel like the apparently I think I remember the story like the basically the knife was on the downward on the downward. Yeah, side. yeah, because he believed that that's what the because Abraham believed that was the case, and I gave you uh, John eight fifty six. Jesus Christ refers to the story, saying that it was all about the story was about him. Can you can you? I want you to try to imagine for a second being tied down. Um, and having your father standing over you with a knife. Yeah. And basically saying, sorry, little dude, um, God wants you. So he, and he misunderstood. Abraham, are you saying because Abraham misunderstood that somehow makes God a bad person? How are you making the correlation between Abraham misunderstanding? So me, the, story, uh, the way the story goes is basically there's, you know, um, we're, we're going to go up and sacrifice, right? And at this point, Abraham already knew. Because Isaac was like, where's the sacrifice? And God's like, you know, and Abraham was like, don't worry, God, God will provide it. The the goat that was- uh, God would what? God would what? Stuck, please let me finish. Okay. That was stuck, didn't, didn't come until after, right? So basically he says, you know, I'm going to tie you down the Lord. And then Isaac is compliant. He's basically like, well, I guess this, if this is what God wants, right? And the whole thing was meant to test Abraham. Now, the funny thing about this is this test from Abraham was coming from the omniscient, which we agreed upon earlier, God, who already knew that if he didn't send the angel to stop him, he was going to go through with it. He was going to kill his son. Okay. Right? So the God who already knew is it's basically like the weirdest fucking puppet master kind of idea, right? It's Maybe because you, you misunderstand. Go, go ahead. This, I want you to go do this thing. OK, even though I already know that you're going to do it, I already know because the Bible says that God's the reader of hearts. So 
he already knew Abraham's heart. He already knew that he would kill What's him. What's your point? What's your point? Get to the point. That God is just like, according to the Bible, which of course the God doesn't exist, right? And this, okay. is, a good, this is a good thing. Yeah, um, yeah, no problem. So the God was basically going to torture, not, not torture. only like th torture the son, but also torture the father. Okay. Like, it, Abraham, I want you to kill your kid. Um, where, where does it say kill, kill your kid? Where does it word, use the Hebrew word kill? Sacrifice. It doesn't say off, as, I, I, as he was tying him down. He's like, if this is what God wants, I'm sorry. It's right in the Bible. What's story. the word? What's the Hebrew word for? Uh, I don't know what the Hebrew word okay. is. Okay. I'm sorry. I just pick up a Bible and read it. Okay. So, so, so let me, let's make it clear for everybody that's listening. He's going to a translation and I'm going to the original Hebrew and he's arguing for this point. You're the one who made uh, argue from this point. I didn't come here to argue for Genesis 22, but I already know the Hebrew word Ola is used there. So you're arguing from a point and you don't have, you didn't do your due diligence. You don't even know the Hebrew. You don't know the proper context, the proper understanding. Again, this is your sixth time. You, you don't understand what you're talking about. But let me ask you a question. Since you're uh, claiming um, that uh, God tortured Abraham, is it not, is it not refer? I think it was mental torture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Whatever torture you, Abraham is not complaining. You're the one complaining, but uh, it's funny that I referred you to John 8, 56, where it says that this was a prefigure of what Jesus Christ would do and showing Abraham the sacrifice God would do so people could understand the, the price he paid. So you have the feeling like if I had a son and God asked me to sacrifice my son, I'd be like, that's my son. So we are to understand now, because look at how God loves us, that he sent his only begotten son to be a sacrifice for us. So that is the message of the story as for John 8, 56, but again, you're not paying attention and you don't even know uh, what you're arguing for. Because if you did know what you were arguing for, you would know the word Ola means ascension primarily. But, but so, so what's your next, what's your next argument? We already next argument? argument. It could have another meaning, right? And you are, have, are, sorry, but do, do you have like a, do you, do you have like a, 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 an advanced degree in the study of these languages or anything like that? To, uh, to... No, uh, no, 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 no. Basically what I'm I did is that, like no, 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 no problem. First thing, first thing first, everybody could go to the, ch uh, to the chapter that he's referring. Google search Genesis 22 interlinear, you'll get the information. I have an interlinear right here. I bought, I spent a hundred dollars on the interlinear. Why? Because I wanted to edify myself, not for me to argue the point, just to edify myself. But you're the one arguing the point and you have no understanding of the verses that you're, you're appealing to. You, sure. you said, that, you said God sent some the she bears. Audience, you, you, said God, God, you said God sent some, I'm just uh, enumerating. I'm just all enumerating. Right. Uh, all right. Time out. Time out. This is Bible bullying. Um, so um, I'm going to, I'm going to put a pause in it right here because we are getting some, some questions in. Um, no problem. So I was going to uh, roll into that and ask a few. Um, I think one of the first ones was a super chat. Um, super chat, yeah. Uh, this one was from a little while ago, I, I'm hoping. Jefferson, don't there. forget my 25%. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Performance like that, you shouldn't, get, you shouldn't get no percentage. So this question is for Terry. Deuteronomy 22, verses 28 through 29. Rape victim compelled to marry rapist. If no money to compensate for damaged property, woman, women are property in Bible. Do you think this is moral? Uh, can you uh, repeat the question? Deuteronomy 22 says what? Uh, chapter 22, verses 28 through 29. Rape victim compelled to marry rapist if no money to compensate oh my for goodness. damaged property. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Guys, guys, guys. Stop repeating the same arguments that you guys heard from somebody else. Do show me you did your due diligence. Go verify the verse and look at the Hebrew. It doesn't say rape. It's talking about a person who... So, uh, uh, who uh, bypasses the authority of the father by having sex with a woman without asking for uh, uh, the father's hand into uh, uh, his daughter into marriage. So he has to pay uh, the price of uh, uh, that he is supposed to pay, like like the story of Isaac, Abraham and Isaac. Abraham uh, sent his servant to get a wife for him, and they paid uh, a payment to the father to have the daughter in hand. You know, when you you uh, you see in a marriage, you, uh, a father hands over the daughter. Well, that comes from the Hebrew, uh, 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 it's a Hebraic principle. So basically what it's saying there is somebody who wants to have sex with a woman without going through the father, he is responsible, A, to pay the payment that he's supposed to pay, and B, to ask her in marriage. That is, and, and that if the father wants. So that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about rape. And you guys, this is the argument that, that people have been using for the last 20 years. You guys could do your due diligence and verify the information. It's not talking about rape. 
Okay, but are you going to address the second part of that, of Justin's Which is question? what? Women are property in the Bible. Do you think this is moral? Where, where does it say woman is, when you say woman is property, was she forced into subjugation? Because uh, uh, you're not going to find anywhere a person is forced well, according outside according of the, the context. Hang on, hang on. According to those, to clarify his question, if he's bringing up 28 through 29. Okay. Uh, if, if the man that lay with her shall give into the unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver. In other words, he they have they have lined laid laid together, and he owes the dad money. Exactly. I just I, I just answered that uh, when, so you ex- sex, when you want to have sex, when you when you want to have sex with a woman, according to the Hebrew scriptures, you have. To, first of all, it's not about sex. You have to if you want to have a woman, ask a woman into marriage. You have to pass by. The, uh, you have to go through the father. Number one. You have to make the payment, and if they accept, the father accepts, and the woman accepts, as per the example of Isaac, uh, uh, the servant asked the father, the father accepted, and he said, if my daughter wants, and he asked the daughter, and she said yes. So this is, I showed a precedent in scripture where my understanding is consistent with what I'm uh, 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 interpreting this uh, or revealing what the verse is saying. You cannot show me anywhere in scripture where a person, uh, an example of a person raping a woman, and then... uh, uh, he forces that that woman into into marriage. That's a, a story that you would you're isolating isolating a story, and coming with your own interpretation that is not consistent with all of scripture. My position is, and the word doesn't mean rape. Check your Hebrew in ten years, guys. Start uh, try, start checking your Hebrew in ten years. That way you don't come and come with seven arguments that are, I all all I refuted all all of them. Next 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 question. Uh, let's see. Uh, from AJ, um, and I would highlight this, but I, I'm having trouble finding it in the regular commentary. For Terry, do you plan on substantiating any of your original claims, or is your entire strategy an attempt at burden shifting? Uh, burden shifting. Um, when you're saying burden shifting, um, I don't understand what you mean by that, because first of all, I established my two proposition. It was not addressed. I won the debate just because of that, because I showed that God is the objected, uh, objective moral standard by substantiating that he is sovereign. I didn't do no burden shifting. I, Within my two propositions, I have established God is God. Now, you, you want to argue against it, you have to show me an alternative that's reasonable. You have not done that. So, again, he is the author of the seven-day cycle, and the seven-day cycle, is, uh, he predicted this universal application as a demonstration of his power over all nations. People say, stupid, is this and that, diverting. But you haven't argued against it, as Michael didn't do. You saw in the beginning, I said I would establish my God. I did it. And then I, I allowed him to ask me all the questions, not because I had to, because he has no moral stand, uh, no objective moral standard for him to judge anyone, especially not God. So I allowed that to happen to... And I say this with all due respect and all humility to educate him on what those verses actually say. Because if he did his research, he would not have looked. He, he would not be looking the way he looks right now. Thank you very much, Michael. You gotta. You wanna respond to that in any way? Um, I I think that uh, the people watching can can judge for themselves. I will lay myself at the altar of sacrifice <laughs> here. Of, of your viewership, Jefferson. Very good. Um, uh, you know, I'll just do that. Maybe we could move on to something. Uh, we move on to something else. How about the um, like? Maybe there, you want to talk about the Ten Commandments? Well, I was gonna. Th- there are a couple more. Sure. Oh, there's there more questions. Couple, All right, wait, there, brother. Yep, there are a couple more. Uh, and I think r- this one's from Randolph Richardson. It it is for Terry. Um, Randolph Richardson. I remember that guy. Why did you try to judge, quote unquote, most atheists or? "Quote unquote," all atheists, based on an interaction with just one atheist. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Randolph. I think we were supposed to have a discussion, right? Uh, hopefully, you do better than what Michael did, because Michael came with the same thing he said for the last debate. Now I come with the same argument, but I haven't been refuted. That's the difference. <laughs> you know, I haven't been refuted yet, so I come with. If it's not broken, don't fix it, right? So I haven't been refuted, so I come with the same argument, and, and it's decisive. And it's the only argument. Now, as far as why did I put every atheists in the same group, I have never made a, a skeptic that re- remained a skeptic after engaging me. And I say that, by uh, uh, I, I can demonstrate that, or it's il- il- illustrated by the fact that A, they don't address the point. You didn't see Michael address my two propositions. He just said it was stupid and that argument. No, it's not. 
or they divert or they provide false information. You've seen all of those three things been manifest by Michael today and all atheists or all skeptics I've debated is on my channel. You can see it's always the same routine. Why don't you argue against the point? But I know you can't. So that's the reason why I put myself in the hot seat to answer all his objection, even though he has nothing to stand on for him to be a judge, uh, for him to judge God. And I responded to all his objections, showing that he doesn't know what he's talking about. So if you're ready, Randolph, to, to debate, you let me know and we could do that uh, when well, you're ready. I, well, we're supposed to. We're still in the middle of this one. Let's let's you know. No, let's, no let's problem. But I'm hoping this Randolph could do before better. we move no on. No problem. No problem. But hopefully Randolph could do a better job. This question wasn't wasn't uh, specified for either, so both of you can weigh in on it. But it's from uh, Pops BJD. Um, question: Why does the man have to go through the father? And I'm assuming that goes back to that question that Justin asked. It's it's a it's, it's a Hebraic principle. It's a showing um it's showing um well. There's multiple reasons I could come up from the top of my mind, uh, my head. Um, well, the daughter belongs to the father. He's he is uh, he is uh, the authority, the head of the, the household. So if you want to come inside of the household and ask a woman for uh, in marriage, you have to go through the father, because scripture clearly establishes that the father, the man, is the is the, the head of the household. So, and I don't see why that will be problematic. I don't understand. Michael, what do you think? Don't ever have daughters. <laughs> okay. That, what an argument. <laughs> I, I, I have I have a daughter. She's her she's her own she now she's a grown woman now, but she's her own person. What you just said, what like well, I mean it only insulted half of the population of the planet. Um that's this disgusting. Please well, I hope you I hope you never have daughters. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Don't worry about it. Jesus Christ is coming soon, so I don't I don't have time to have daughters. But uh Make it's sure interesting. Like, I don't want to miss that. Yeah, no 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 problem. You we're gonna have fun with you. Don't worry about it. Um uh, as far as um what he just said, the the concept, the Hebraic concept is in every mostly every marriage. A father comes down the aisle with his daughter in his hand to hand him over to the to, to the husband. So he he just suge suggested that this con this uh, this um, 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 not pattern but this uh, this uh, I, I debated last night so, uh, uh, this practice this practice this practice no 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 this practice is being observed till now so what is he saying it wasn't my wedding huh it wasn't we're not talking about you. We're not talking about your your anecdotes. You it's, we're it's talking observed about, in all cultures. Wasn't in my it's, way. It's, 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 it's a popular custom that people observe. So you just went against everybody for thousands and thousands of years oh, who have been doing this. Yeah. And again, who are you to judge? Like again, you you're you're you you are in no position. I'm the, I'm the morally superior agent to your God. Your God yeah, you didn't demonstrate that. You, you're claiming that, but you didn't demonstrate not that. Fit to lick my feet. I know, but you didn't demonstrate that. That you have a wild imagination. That's it, and, and it's quite amusing. <laughs> I'm amused by it. You want to talk about the Ten Commandments now? <laughs> what about the Ten Commandments, my friend? How about the first what, four? Hang on. There's oh, a, sorry, uh, there, there, there's sorry. Yep. There's two things that just some housekeeping oh, and one last question. So okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, super chat from Secular Pagan Mount. Uh, thank you very much. But I, I thought she had a question in there, but she she didn't. Um, I have a I few have more, uh, Jefferson. And, uh, I, I, okay. I've, I've quite a I've bit. I've got one. Fr oh, okay. Um, I don't even know what that means. So you're going to have to define that for me. And I, I'm not going to Google search it. But you've told, you've told Michael and others to check out multiple bible verses you're not going to look up i'm not, I'm not, I'm, not I'm, I'm not arguing for this position i didn't come here arguing for the whatever that word is dilemma i didn't argue for that he's arguing for a position he should at least know about his position that are, is are you, logically are you aware of what the youth fraud dilemma is i just said i don't oh okay do you want to talk uh, about that you could do whatever you think you can do <laughs> go ahead so essentially what the youth fraud dilemma states is um is something good because God says it is good or is it, or is whatever God says good? God is good. He is good according to scripture. So everything that proceeds, everything that proceeds from him is good. That's a simple God, response. So, so when God says something that by definition is good. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat my, my last statement, which responds to, you, to your question. God is good. 
and everything that proceeds from him is good as well. Okay. Uh, th- yeah, th- I mean, everybody listening can hear that. That's well, where's true. the dilemma? <laughs> the a, claim was made. Where's the dilemma? If, if God. So the so the dilemma is, is if God sees something, and sees that it's good, that means that goodness doesn't come from Him, Ooh. and and so it either either he sees something and recognizes that it's good or whatever he says is good. So I, I just said uh, he is good and everything that proceeds from him. Can you address my point? Everything that proceeds, yeah. he is number one, stipulation number one, he is good. Right. Stipulation number two, everything that proceeds from him is good. So what right. are you talking about? I, I don't I, see no del- dilemma in that. Okay. I know, I know, I know. You used that argument against the last guy because he didn't understand that God is good. Will be that is his. That is his. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, his uh, uh, ontology. He is good. That's, that's his nature. That's fine. Cool. We we can we can move on. Were there other questions? Yeah, there was a super chat here from Best in Show Deuteronomy chapter twenty five verses eleven through twenty two. Why is a wife's hand chopped off for merely coming in contact with an attacker's genitals? When rescuing her husband from the attacker. No, 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 no. It doesn't say uh, merely uh, touching. It says if you grab the, the nuts, somebody else's genitals, you deserve to have your hand cut off. That's number one. And number two, the, the, the principle or the lesson between, uh, uh, of this is a woman should know her place and not come in between two men discussing. That's, the, that's basically the, 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 uh, the spiritual uh, lesson. Yes, yes, yeah, I said it. No, we're, we're, we're manly men on this side. Um, do not come between two men discussing. Well, speak for yourself. No, no, no problem. So if you try to grab somebody's nuts, you deserve to have your hand cut off. And do you have an example of that? No, because Hebrew wo- women of that time knew her place. I don't know if any woman that was arguing against that. Give me the example. <laughs> I don't know why you want to grab somebody's nuts. <laughs> is, 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 that your, is, that your, is that your objection against God? That he's saying, don't touch somebody's nuts? I can tell you, Mr. De- Le- oh, yeah. it, it it is it is quite effective. Thank you. Yeah. I, <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. I say it again. If you try to grab somebody's nuts, you sh- you deserve to have your hand cut off. And again, it doesn't say you have to cut the hands uh, the, the person's hands off. The person is allowed to go to the judge to ask for him uh, for a person to get uh, their hand cut off. You just don't go to somebody and say, oh, "Let me cut your hand off." You have to go to the judges. So that means a person could be merciful to that woman and say, hey, what you doing? Why are you grabbing my nuts? Relax. <laughs> I'm just talking to your man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Go grab my nuts, man. That's my family right there, buddy. Merciful to the woman. That's interesting. I, of course. I, I no, it, merciful to anybody. You, if, you, if you have the advantage, according to the law, on anybody, you can show mercy to that person. Because if you go to the – because it says, um, as Jesus did with the, 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 uh, the adulterous woman – that the first person who's sinless throw the first stone. So if you're going to go in front of the judge, you got to make sure you have no sin as well because you will be found guilty as well. So the purpose of that is to recognize yourself and not to be judgmental. But if somebody just grabs your nuts and keeps doing it, yeah, they deserve to have their uh, hands cut off. Have you considered that maybe that's why she was grabbing his stones? Uh, Jeff, I do have quite quite a few older questions. What What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Okay, yeah, well, and I, I, I to wrap this one up, and then we're gonna. Um, no, no, but I, I like to understand what what, what you just said there because it seems very interesting. The, the, she was grabbing the, the nuts because of what? No, no, no. I said stones, as in, as in uh, Leviathan. Uh, uh, you know, it wasn't was Leviathan. It was the the other one, Behemoth. His sinews are in his uh, his stones are in his sinews. Those stones. I don't even know what you're talking about, but I, hope I, the best I get it. I get I, it. I know that. I get it. Testicles. Uh, I don't know that, what you're talking about. I, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. That, I don't know what you're that, talking about. That, the, the example <laughs> that you gave, though, as a point of contra, uh, just a point of correction, Deuteronomy 25, 11, 12, in that situation where two men are fighting and the woman seizes the attacker of her husband by the private parts, shall be shown no pity. Um, Shall be shown no pity. That's verse no 12. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 12. Uh, you shall yeah, cut yeah. off her hand, show her no pity. No, 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 no. Show her no pity if you bring her in front of the judge. You will show you 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 cannot show me uh, any uh, 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 um, example of a person taking the law into their own hands. They have to bring her to the to uh, to the judges. 
uh, people who have been uh, put in that place to judge between brothers and, and, and uh, the members of Israel. And, and a, a person doesn't shall have. Not, and no pity will be shown to her. No, no, no pity if she's brought in front of the court. Where are you reading context. that? Where are you reading that? The whole that's scripture not, says that. Uh, it does not. If you want to go to you want to go to Deuteronomy one. No, because no. that's the first chapter. That's the first chapter. It says Deuteronomy one. You, you want to go back God, to Deuteronomy? Back to the beginning. Do you know okay, what Deuteronomy one is about? What? It, you know what Deuteronomy I, is, is about? It's what reestablishing chapter? the law. Deuteronomy I know. 1? I know. I know what Deuteronomy is. Do you do you know that it wasn't written by Moses? No, no, no. If you're appealing to the Old Testament, I'm not even going to where it's written by Moses. Whoever is written by Deuteronomy one starts with establishing what the law is, expounding on the law. Deuteronomy yeah, it, it one. Kinda, it, it kind of sums up the other books of the. Uh, of no, the, and no, not Torah. sums up. Expound Deuteronomy one five says he expounded on the law uh, through the Holy Spirit. So the point is, I my 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 position is consistent, which is what you have to bring the person in front of the courts, and they you don't and have she, to, you don't and have she to. shall be shown no pity. No pity if you bring her in front of the courts, yes, but you don't have to bring her in front of the courts. That's the point. It, no. Anyway, uh, let's yeah, move no on. No yeah. Peter, Can we what move? did you want to? That's yeah. that. I mean. That's that's just blatantly not what that is, and you could check a study Bible to see that. Peter, what did you want to? Yeah, I've got several Move questions, on. and I, I can barely keep up. I've got uh, at the moment I've got seven chats open in order to be able to save all of them. So, uh, okay, well, a very a very old one. Victory till the end. Uh, he said, "You know what? I have a question for Terry. Why is he so egotistical and dishonest?" No, uh, well, you have, it's easy to, you could say I'm egotistical. Why? I, did, I do this purposely. I'm going to tell you why. But if you want to call me a liar, you have to show where I lied. Like, just calling me a liar is like, or just saying, oh, my argument is stupid. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, on this side, we actually develop our arguments to show, like, why it is uh, reasonable, why it is a, a strong argument. And uh, as you, you have seen illustrated today, I've showcased, A, my argument is infallible because it wasn't refuted. And number two, I've shown you that people argue against Christianity, don't even know what they're talking about. That's number two. As far as being egotistical, my purpose is to, it says in Proverbs 21, 22, a wise, wise man scales the city of the mighty, their arguments, and brings down the strength of their confidence. He went from being confident to not being confident. I'm doing it purposely to show you this is what happens when you, Try to depend on somebody else's arguments because the 70 cycle is my argument. It's from God, but it's mine. I'm not repeating somebody else's argument. So I, do, I did my due diligence. I did all my research. I, did, I went through history. I, did, I read the primary sources so I know what I'm talking about so I don't look like a fool. But when you're coming with your, somebody else's argument and then I start saying, hey, what does the Hebrew word Ola means? And you don't know. I'm like, okay, so why are you appealing to that verse? Because if, if when I go to Leviticus 25 and I'm saying, okay, you're saying verse 46 and 47 is about slavery. Uh, what about verse 48 and 49? How is that consistent with your, your, your narrative? Oh, I didn't read it. I don't know about it. So how do you know about verse 46 and 47? Because you're repeating what people told you. And Dr. Joshua Bowen, I have a video on him exposing him, exposing his failure to address my points. And the last time I went on a, a call show, he didn't want to have a discussion with me because he knows he's been exposed. So that's what happens when you depend on people. I don't depend on somebody to feed me information. I do my own homework. Thank you very much. So I think what's in it, just like a moment just to, re to respond to that. Um, it's probably not wise for you to think that you've uh, affected my confidence in any way because um, you haven't. Cool. Um, but the if if anything... If anything, the best you're going to be able to do by saying um, later verses in Leviticus um, have, have an issue, take a phone call, man. You're only help yourself. Um, maybe it's mom. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> the the best you're going to be able to do is say that 44 through 46 uh, contradict um, later verses. It, it, I think that's the best you're going to be able to, to do. Um so much else was said, but frankly, it's been a, a whirlwind. Jefferson, I was so relaxed when I came into this. Um, <laughs> and it's, 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 uh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm wondering if we'll have time to get to um, 
anything else like the uh, the Ten Commandments or or, or something. But um, I, I appreciate the questions, even though none of them are from me. That's okay. Um, but uh, and I will say to Randolph, if you're watching, brother, I made a mistake. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> mistake. Randolph is watching. <laughs> I. I I want to read this one. This one's from Justin for five dollars. Thanks for the super chat, Justin. Uh, you mentioned internal critique. If you want to use logic, why are you okay using circular arguments? Can you name an inference rule? Fair question. Yeah, and I that... think yeah, I, I think what he would probably um, say to something like that is that um, is what I've heard some other Christians say is that there's some circular reason that's virtuous. Um, so he may fall back on that. Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, did he, is he, is he gone? Did he just take a phone call? Is that it? Is yeah. He, he lifted his phone up and apparent, I don't know whether, yeah, I don't know what happened, but I mean, it's, Pete, you know, pizza's there. Um, well, if he's not going to show up, it's nine o'clock, it's getting late. Michael, I'm going to give you the last word for now. Yeah, um, I have a ton of questions left. Oh, well, how, how many more questions are left? Peter? Oh, I, I've got a lot. So, so I we, we did have a super oh. chat from Marty Cameo that I just put up. Um, let me go and look. Uh, secular pagan mom for five dollars. Definitely not convinced. Spatchy, wonder what insult he has for me, ignoring ignoring any aspect of my handle. This guy us something for fucking sure. Uh, and then, uh, uh, let's see, best in show. Oh, you read out the one, uh, for best in show. Yep. Yep. Um, yep we got that one. Mar Marty, uh, I had that one so I can close this one. Uh, I've got, I've got so many chats open in order to be able to capture the questions. So I need to be... What else I have? Uh, that's not it. I'm just going to apologize if we miss any of your questions, folks. So, it's my first day as a moderator. Well, well you did you did a spectacular job, Jefferson. Um, uh, I, I will say that I think that it's it's interesting. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just making a statement that I think we've got the answer because I think uh, when it comes to morality, the debater who sticks with the debate in order to finish the debate and not go off on a phone call it is is showing morality there we are hello yes we were, we were wondering hello? whether or not thank you, you thank you, you for your patience ah oh, you only missed six questions what, what, so, no problem um so uh i got another question for you victory till the end uh how does christian morality being better follow from God exists because of a media of my mediocre argument how does how does Christian how does how does Christian morality being better follow yeah. from yeah. God exists because of my mediocre argument okay okay first of all again a claim my argument is not mediocre it's still infallible I've debated, I, I, I don't think I've that's that's not that's not the gist of the question no, 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 no. I, I know, I know, I know what the question is. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm addressing the fact that he's saying it's mediocre. Claiming it's mediocre is one thing. Demonstrating that it is, is a whole different issue. It, you see, you guys, it's not, you're not laboring it's, enough. You're not putting I, enough effort. I number two, number two. Number he two. did, he did offer to, for me to read it uh, in a different way. And, and maybe I should have. So let, let me clarify. How does Christian morality being better follow from God exists? Okay, perfect. So uh, the fact that if God exists, that means he is, he has the right, the prerogative to establish the objective moral standards. So if God exists, then he is the moral authority and we have nothing else but to do, uh, nothing else to do but uh, to um, hum uh, humble ourselves and adhere to, that, uh, to, to those moral uh, uh, standards. That so is might, how it follows. So might is right. No, um, he's your creator. He's right. That's 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 the that's it, that's the point. It, it, he he's he, you can, he, you can, he created all things, so he knows what's right. Anyway, you can spin doctor that any way you want, but I think it's very one of the things. What, you said, what did you say? You can spin what? You can spin doctor 
that any any way you would like. What does that like, even mean? <laughs> what are you saying? What do you mean? Look, look it up. Um, so, no, but it's irrelevant to my point, but go ahead. But I think what's really interesting is a moment ago you said something that I, mean, go ahead. I think everybody watching will have wished that you took to heart. And that is that simply making a claim doesn't make it true. Exactly. Uh, right. So your your whole basis for the for the step for establishing God is real is uh, God is real, and because, and that's why I asked you. I didn't say that. That's not my argument. Uh, if you if you, wanna, if you want if you want if you want if you want to characterize me correctly, state my my, my arguments. It's it's right. really easy. It's, so, it's two sure. propositions. Um, that's why I asked you whether or not you were a presupp. Had you had you identify it as a presuppositionalist? I just I'm not a presupposition. I, I told you already what my propositions are. Why are you saying I'm presupposing something when I'm not presupposing nothing? So then, so then just for just for S and G's, um, please repeat your two propositions. Number one is a claim. Mm -hmm. The Hebrews claim that their God is the author of the seven-day cycle. That's a claim. Time out. Yeah. So the, does the fact that the Hebrews claim, yeah, does that make it true? No, because it's a claim. <laughs> Hey, good. What the heck is going on here? Is this is this a joke? Like, I, I, I might be tricked there. I said it's a claim. If I said it, I Do said it's a claim. Do you have any capacity to demonstrate that that claim is it's true? true? And what did I say for the last? How long I've been here? What did I say? What did I say? Um, we are all humbled by your intelligence. Please enlighten us further. No, 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 no. But uh, I, I said the second proposition is the one that demonstrates that it is no longer circular. Because I said to your first time when you said it was circular, I don't know if you, you were paying attention, that it demonstrates power over our reality, therefore showing that it comes from God. Because he said it will be his sign, his demonstration of power over all nations. So the fact that every single nation has been submitted to a seven day cycle as he predicted would happen and being the sign of his authority over all nations showing that he has sovereignty over you going against your will by replacing all the calendars the weekly calendars which were held which was held for religious and cultural practices you have to argue against that because that shows me he has power over your reality if, if that's not sufficient enough you have to explain to me why I have to argue about that in a debate that's about morality. You're the one who brought it up again. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. You bring it up. Are, are you able to, tr to follow your own train of thought? This is the same thing that happened yesterday with these atheists. Okay, it, hang on. No, 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 okay. don't do that. Okay, no, okay, no problem. No problem. Okay. I'm sorry. We got I'm we got sorry. more because people have people have put in questions. No, so we, we need to get to those. We no have, problem. No problem. We now Justin, have we now have thanks. questions coming in from Discord as well. So we we need to we need to. Ooh. Catch up on the Hi, questions. So I, have... I wanted to ask this one. Um, okay. Uh, this one was from Justin. You were gone um, uh, okay. before. Uh, yeah. He said, you mentioned an internal critique. If you want to use logic, why are you okay using circular arguments? And can you name an inference rule? Okay, first of all, I, I don't need to use philosophy. I said this already. I don't have to put it in syllogistic form. It doesn't matter. Uh, I said from the, you mentioned internal critique. If you want to use it. So, Wait, wait, can you put it up again? Because I want to see what he's trying to say here. Because first of all, I don't have to put it in syllogistic form for it to be true. That's number that's, one. That's not what but he's it, asking. Okay, let me let me read it then. You mentioned internal critique. If you want to use logic, why are you why are you okay using circular arguments? Wait, wait, wait. Explain to me what internal critique, number one, has to do with a, uh, uh, um, with logic. I'm appealing to a source. I'm not appealing to logic there. I'm I, just I appealing think... to a source. I'm just appealing to a source. If I if I had to be charitable to Justin, what I think he means is that since you're using a term like internal critique, which is commonly used by philosophers, um, especially when talking about you know logical discussions, logical debates, that oh, yeah. you you are at least acquainted with you know philosophy to that degree, and then he that's and that's why he's wanting to know why you're okay. Okay, no problem. Th thank you, thank thank you for the clarification. I didn't know internal critique has to do with philosophy. I I, I thought you could use internal critique for any. Uh, aspect of uh, of a discussion. I didn't know you had to limit it to the to philosophy. But again, I still don't see. Even if I if if I would accept that, I don't understand what our eternal critique has to do with. Uh, well, 
He said, if you want to use logic, why are you okay using a circular argument? I said, the first proposition is a claim, so it is a circular argument, but the second one is the one that validates the first claim. The fact that he has demonstrated power over, to subjugate your reality is no longer circular. So the second proposition validates the first proposition. Do you understand That's the reason why? That makes the question. And as far as the inference rule, I, I, I don't do those type of things. I'm not a philosopher and I don't have to do all okay. of that. If you want, if you want, what you can do to all these philosophers and all these people that want me to put in syllogistic form, take my argument and put it in a syllogistic form and show me any alter, uh, all, any other alternative than what I presented. God is sovereign. Show okay. me anything that contradicts that. Thank you. And the day you can do that, I will become an atheist. It, it, I, I'm not becoming an atheist because he lost the debate, but Wait, I think you, you might want to you might want to change that. It's not because because somebody could put it in a syllogism. I don't know that you're going to become an atheist just because somebody can successfully no 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 put, it, it put, in a, put it in a syllogistic form and show me any alternative to the conclusion I came up with that God is sovereign. That's not exactly me, what you do with a syllogism, but all right. Um, no no no. Well, you you would have to. The only other alternative is human agency, and I'm going to show you that you're not able to do that. That's the point. Terry, okay. are you suggesting that if if no one else can prove you wrong, then your claim is right? No, the claim is only the first one. It so sounds it, like that's what you're doing. I, you just spoke over me. I, I was responding. Uh, the first proposition is a claim. The second one is not a claim. It's uh, a demonstration of power. It's no longer a claim. The problem is. It's your problem. reality. Are, do you keep a seven-day cycle? Yes or no? You're, you're, I'm not going to go into 70 cycle. Your, your you're second, the one who brought it up. Your second premise assumes... The second premise is a 70 cycle. Right. Assumes that the first one is true. Right? Second pre proposition is a support validating is, the first the one. Is are you not talking about the 70 cycle right now? So I'm asking a question. Is, are, is your reality not your subjugated entire, all nation to a seven day week? Your entire argument... For a you don't want to answer the question because because you know where it leads because it leads to God being sovereign. Now yes. you're t you're over talking him. Okay, I'm sorry. Your entire I argument for establishing that God existed was restating your your first claim, and you in you yourself called it a claim, right? So, and what I asked my first what I asked earlier, and what I'm asking again is that that claim. Do you have the capacity to demonstrate? that the God that you think exists, exists. Because if you go to your second point, you are begging the question that your claim, the first one, is true. And, and what, I'm, what I'm stuck on, and I need you to explain it because I'm too silly and not smart enough to understand it. I agree. Is, is that you have, to, you have to explain to me how your first claim okay is true okay so, so you're done can okay, you, okay you're done without referring you, you, to the second part okay so, uh, I, so re without referring to my second part a step you, you you said because because the because the hebrews took this from god please demonstrate that the god exists is that my argument? Because the Hebrews took it from God. Do you know my, my second pro proposition? No, not the second, the second proposition. Not the second. No, no, no. My argument comes twofold. Uh, it, it, my argument is not without the second. The second is there to them. The second proposition is the demonstration. I could still, I could still present my case without the first proposition. I could Do say he took it from the. Right. Can I finish my statement? Because uh, now you're the one interrupting. I could I'm say sure. it came from Babylon. Sorry. I could say it came from Babylon, supposedly, like people say, and God said he took it from Babylon and. Subjugated all nations to it. You're begging the. It's still a prediction. It's still it's still a prediction. Okay, the Hebrews say that it referred to their God as being the one making the prediction right. and uh, an exclusive prediction that nobody else can do in a universal way, and saying that this will be the marker, the signature that He is God. Tell me how that's uh, that doesn't logically yeah. follow that the fact that everybody keeps a seven day cycle against their will doesn't show that it comes from God. Can I can I can I quickly that. can I quickly interrupt because I'm losing questions from the chat amongst which uh, are our super chats. 
We need to keep the answers to the questions shorter because otherwise people are going to ask questions, pay for the questions, and they're not going to be asked. I'm sorry, but I I have to interrupt. No problem. My argument is infallible. Thank you. Yeah, we have uh, this one here um, from John Rapp. Does or doesn't the Bible give rules of slavery? Uh, The word is abed, abed, Hebrew. The Hebrew word is abed. It can mean slave. It can mean servant. It is for you now to demonstrate which one it is as it relates to the Israelites. I already said every servant, the purpose of a servant being incorporated in Israel is, number one, for them to be strengthened by those who know the law of God. Number two, for them to be enriched. Number three, for them to be incorporated and become a, a member of the congregation of Israel. Number four, uh, for them to know God. And number f- and number five, for them to inherit land within Israel so that they can live with is, uh, the members of Israel. So the purpose of God of uh, choosing Israel to conquer the world so that everybody will become a child of Israel. That's not slavery. That is become a servant for seven years and then you will become a member as soon as you des- uh, decide to keep the law as for ex- Exodus 12, verse 18, 19, 48, and 49. Uh, uh, yeah, that's good enough. I could give you a whole bunch of verses, but that's good enough. Okay. This question is from Tyler West uh, for Terry. Korban Ola means burnt offering, a tribute to God, entirely burned on the altar. Why should we believe you know more than the scholars? And then he okay. writes that last bit. Okay, Tyler West. Tyler West, let me help you out. You, you invested nine ninety nine. No problem. Not, interesting number. Um, check any Hebrew interlinear, and check out the 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 the, the you're going to see Ola comes from the Hebrew verb Allah, and you're going to see that primary definition is ascension. All right, Hebrew interlinear. You could go to any Hebrew interlinear. It's going to give you that uh, uh, definition. All right. So thank you very much. All right, I was going to read this one. Um, this is from uh, J.L. Warren, Bridge of the Divide. I still want to debate this guy. I also submitted a question via Discord. This was his question. It's a little long, so I'm going to read this here. And this was addressed earlier. Question for Mr. D. How do you reconcile Elijah cursing insulting, or insulting children and God having 42 kids mauled to death by bears with your position that God is all-knowing and was fully aware that this action would contradict the future position as laid out by Christ? Why have children... Why have children murdered for saying words to one person when the all-knowing entity knew its position on such actions would change in the future? Also, for clarification, the Euthyphro dilemma uh, demonstrates the objective morality does not exist. Morality is either subjective to God or subjective to man, but there is no objective standard. Okay, number one, I'm going to go to the last question. I already told you God is, uh, the into- uh, he, is God, uh, he is good. That is his an- uh, ontology. So your whole argument is on the basis that goodness is outside of him. I'm saying he is good and it proceeds from him. So your whole argument goes out the window. I don't know how come no Christian ever smacked this down. I saw a couple of debates people were using this and I'm like, God is good. That's what scripture says. He is good and everything proceeds from him is good. Well, there's not a lot of Christians in this world. Number two, as far as the the, the, the bear thing, uh, first of all, they're not really, you can't really say there were children, children. Because God has mercy on certain people, they were at a level where they were responsible for their actions. Because you could be, uh, it could, it, the word in question in Hebrew could refer to children or ad, uh, adolescents, so people who are older. So you don't know if it was child. I don't believe it was children. Children. Why? Because they're still um, unaware of the difference between good and evil. Now, if you're gonna uh, attack a prophet of God, you're attacking God, and God is allowed to remove His light. He removed his light, evil befalls you. Everybody here is under the light of God. As soon as he decides to remove, and this is a grace. This is not something that's owed to us. If you keep rebelling against him, he can remove that light and you get exactly what you deserve. As scripture reveals from Genesis to Revelation, this is a concept that's all throughout scripture. So God is not responsible if evil befalls you. Can I, ask a, you can I ask you a question about yeah, that? It's kind so, of funny that you... Can I, can I ask yeah, you a question okay, about that? Because if, if that is your claim, then God is yeah. by definition responsible for all evil happening to people. If he removes the light... How? If he removes the light, and that is what brings in the evil, then he's responsible. Yeah. No, no, no. It's yes. the book of Job uh, no, addresses no, no, no. that. Uh, look... You can't have your cake and eat it too. If God is actively... Okay, you won. If you, God won. Is, you won, you won, you won. 
Hold on. If God is actively removing the light and therefore bringing in evil, bringing in evil, as you claimed, I'm, I'm using your Not, words. It, it, it doesn't say bring it. I, I never said bringing. I didn't ever you, say bringing. you used those words several times. I didn't say bring. I didn't say bring. I says he removes his light and evil is allowed to t overtake you. So now you're saying that's the that. reason why you, I, I was you, about to respond to you. I, I, I was I've, about to respond to you by giving you an example. In the taken book of it down at least twice where you said bringing in evil. And people oh, can go evil? Yeah, yeah, no people problem. can go back. So. If, if, if I said that, uh, uh, let me correct myself. Let me correct myself. If I said that, um, let me say it again. Uh, wherever there's light, darkness cannot overwhelm that. Okay? Power. So it's all about sovereignty. Okay. The light is not owed to nobody. It's a grace. So your, your argument goes out the window already there. So it's not something owed to us. But because he shows mercy to all people, level of mercy, the, the, the standard of mercy that's uniform throughout all people is that he's shining his light on you. You're alive. It's by that light that you are able to, to live. If you continue to rebel against him, he is allowed to remove that grace from you, that light, and it allows the enemy to take advantage. He didn't send the devil to attack you. Mm -hmm. But he knows the devil will attack you because that is his if purpose. He knows, he if he knows the devil will attack you, if he knows the devil will attack yes, you, yes, he knows. He knows that. Yeah. He knows that. Then he's he's responsible. He's not responsible for it. Then he's responsible. Yes. Oh, it, it doesn't follow. It doesn't okay. follow. But I'll, thanks, I'll go thanks. to the nice I'll try. go to the next yeah. question. I lost it. I'll try and and rephrase it as yeah. it was asked. Um, the topic yes. the topic was what is superior, Christian or secular morality. Um, Amen. If if we have to go by the tone of voice of the two interlocutors, then why is is the secular one winning in this case? It, it was and something along those lines. I forgot it. I, it's, I, sadly, I can't pull it up again. I also don't know who asked. Give me an M. Give me an I. Give me a C. I don't. I don't that's, do the pom poms. That if, is. If you're gonna say he. No, no, no. That's exactly what they meant. I understand if you're saying somebody won this debate and it's not me. Um, no, no, no. Good that's luck not, to you. That's not what I they said. The best. That's not what they said. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Repeat, repeat. I, I, I was too excited. It, I it was about. No, it I, was I, about I, demonstrating the, the morality. One interlocutor demonstrated demonstrated good morality. Another one didn't. Along those lines. But who who's the one that did it? Did it, uh, demonstrated and who didn't? I don't know what the question is asking me. What am I supposed to respond to that? Let's just let the audience decide that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't yeah, worry about I it. I, I don't appeal to the audience anyways. Uh, even if the, if the whole world said I lost, I'm still going to have that smile of confidence. Don't worry about it. But, <laughs> My God is coming soon, so don't worry. Hang on, time out. Peter, are there, are there uh, sorry to interrupt, but um, we're, we're starting to go off track. And we're, yeah, we're, I, I have, I have no more left. Are there, there was any, one... are there any other... There was one that I, I could recall off the top of my head, and, and the last few minutes I haven't seen any questions where I was tagged in. And I'm trying to look if I okay. see see uh, some for you, but I don't think so. I, yeah, I want to wrap this up because it's getting late and I, I can't okay. stay on much longer. Um, I, so I guess we'll do this. Closing statements for uh, Michael and Terry. Um, since ter uh, Terry opened, Michael, uh, if you've got a closing statement that you want to give, go ahead and do that now. Well, I'd like to thank Jefferson and Peter for being uh, gracious and, uh, and hosting this and, and moderating this. Um, I like to say that it was fun, but it wasn't. Um, I think all we need to do is look at, um, is, is look at the, some of the, the points that were made and try to reconcile even though none of us clearly are as smart as terry when it comes to biblical interpretation um try to um just look at those things and then uh, i also appreciate the fact that somebody thinks that i was um that i was more moral i i, I turned the dick on a, a little bit um but that was uh that's my um yeah that's just the, the heathen in me so i'll uh but I won't ask anybody for forgiveness. Uh, yeah, I would, 
my, my biggest recommendation, honestly, is anyone and everyone who will watch this, please don't waste your time in speaking with Terry. Because he only has one agenda. Um, we, we were meant to speak about morality. And unfortunately, from the get-go, we went on to seven-day cycle BS. So regardless of what you are going to discuss with him, please understand that that is what you are discussing. And it's probably uh, we, we missed your last, your last statement. Maybe it's God who, who, if you want to repeat your last statement, that would be great. It's I'm such a nice guy. Um, sorry, what was the last thing people heard me say? Uh, uh, he's going to use the seven day, you know to, what to expect with Terry. He's going to use the yeah. seven day cycle. Yeah. That's yeah. basically what you're saying. Yeah. So regardless of what a topic of discussion may uh, be determined, that's what will be uh, discussed. And that was evident tonight. So please don't bother wasting your time. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jeff. Jefferson for this opportunity to demonstrate Jesus is Lord and sovereign over all nations. And by that, showing that uh, any rebelling against him will have dire consequences. Um, so what have we established today? He said, oh, Terry used the seven day cycle argument. Um, it seems like he has some problem with uh, reasoning because I established that there's a moral standard, obje objective moral standard established by God, if I'm able to prove that he is. So that's the reason why I use the 70 cycle arg argument. And I just used it to show you that if he's not able to argue against it and he wasn't able to do it, I have won the debate. But I was, uh, I allowed, allowed him to entertain his false claims. I, 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 I left the 70 day cycle argument in the very beginning. I challenged him twice. Then I, I forgot about it. He's the one who brought it back multiple times. So when he's saying that, oh, I, I, I keep keep repeating it. No, you keep bringing it. You brought it back multiple times. And I put myself on the hot seat to, to entertain all of the false claims that he presented about my God. Because he his position was, I'm going to um, grant you that your God is God. And I'm going to do an internal critique. And then he's not doing an internal critique. He's not even following, following his own train of thought. You're doing an internal critique, right? then you're not doing an inter internal critique. Which one is it? And as he was trying to do an internal critique, what did he do? Let me read, stipulate what he said and let's finalize with this. He went to the slavery issue. I asked him from the very same chapter, what it says in verse 35, that the purpose of being a servant is to be strengthened and for them to live inside of the congregation of Israel, for them to become a member of Israel. How is that compatible with, with slavery? It's not. Did he respond to that? Oh, oh. I, I don't know about that. I'm not a specialist. So why are you arguing about it? <laughs> why are you arguing? And his whole position is about trying to find some moral defects by doing an internal critique. But the, the, his position is based on his ignorance. Because if you don't even know about the very same chapter, verse 35, verse 47, verse 48, how do you know about verse 46 and, uh, and 47? Because you're repeating somebody else's argument. Then he went to the bears thing. I said, show me where it says God sent the bears. He, it took him a while to look for the verse. And then all of a sudden he wants to com conflate cursing with sending bears. Is there a link? How does that follow? I don't know. Then he went to um, Jesus Christ calling a woman a dog. The, the woman called herself a dog. <laughs> she called herself a dog. She recognizes her failure and she was blessed for it. And this was a uh, an example for all of us to recognize that we have acted like dogs. Yes, yes. I've acted like, like a dog too. I recognize my, I was a dog as well. And I received blessing because, because of that. Now, this is consistent with the narrative throughout scripture. Mo, uh, uh, what's his name? Job called himself a worm. So I don't understand why you're arguing, making yourself an advocate for people who don't want you as an advocate. That shows you how crazy <laughs> certain people are. Like they want to argue for people and people don't want... I don't want your help. Why are you trying to argue for me? Anyways, and then he went to, what did he say? What did he say? He, okay, he went to 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 to, to, to Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, talking about the sword. Jesus sent the sword. The, the word is the sword. The, what's the separation? What's being separated is those who have the word in them, and who want to follow God. So that's why he says, 
when he argued about supposedly saying uh, 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 those who do doesn't hate their mother and their father, uh, those who love mother, this is what the verse says. It doesn't use the word hate. If you love mother and father more than you love me, you're not worthy of my love. That's what it says. And I agree with that. Why would you follow God? Uh, uh, why follow uh, mother or father uh, and, uh, and deny God? It doesn't make sense. God first, then you can love your parents. And finally, oh, the, the thing about the sacrifice, I asked him what the word Ola means. He doesn't even know. He said she was being a harlot. In the very verse, verse 38, I think, she was a virgin. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make these type of arguments? She, was a, she, she, she asked her father to be a harlot, two months to be a harlot. And then he reads from this very same passage, she was a virgin. So she was a virgin harlot. How does that work? This is to show you the reason why he wants to censor me. Don't don't debate with Terry. Why? Because I make people look the way they look. That's why they don't want to debate me. Because you, you could do those arguments with Sunday worshipers. I saw what you did with the other guys. Sad for them. But with me, you would not be able to do that. And I demonstrated that. And I don't remember the rest of his false claims. But thank you for this opportunity. I won from the very fact that I presented two infallible prop propositions. You could say it's weak. That's easy to do. Demonstrated in this week, that's a whole different issue. And by that, I already established that God is the moral objective standard that we need to abide by. I already did that. But I was allowing him to make his false claims so I could educate the crowd, the audience, on what scripture actually entails, what it actually teaches. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm hoping some some other atheist comes around and tries to make the same. Hopefully you guys learn and don't repeat the same. And hopefully, last word, last statement. Hopefully you come prepared with, for your own arguments. Like you know the arguments you're presenting. That's the minimum you can do. Huh? Thank you. All right. And with that, I'm going to give, because she uh, posted quite a few super chats and this one didn't get posted up. So I'm going to give Secular Pagan Mom. I hope this doesn't offend either you or Michael, Terry, but she gets the last word. Wait, I thought this guy was arguing for Islam. <laughs> Thank you, Psycho Big and Mom. Uh, and with that, we are going to uh, we are going to take off. So thank you, Thank you to you Michael. Guys. Thank you to Terry for this debate. Thank you to everybody in the super chat. My apologies for any confusion. Deep apologies if we did happen to miss one of your questions. I'm very sorry. Uh, but like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. The contact information for both Michael and well, information from uh, Michael's podcast and for Terry's uh, YouTube channel are available in the description. So with that, uh, Peter, is there anything else we need to do housekeeping wise? Nope. Okay. Nope. Uh, all right. I think we are done. Thank you again, everybody, and good night.